Anzac Day footy and frothies. Barney and Daggy with you uh, with the review show to look back on a pretty good round of footy, actually. Some crackers all the way across the board. Plenty to talk about. Uh, Barney, how are you going? You're sounding amazing at the moment. Got you set up with a, a radio loop <laughs> finally, so uh, yeah, don't sound like you're doing it from a matchbox or um, a pound. Yeah, a good friend of mine came around and um, dropped in a, a Roadcaster Pro, which is obviously elevated my <laughs> sound quality, hopefully, for the listeners. But um, What a treat for everyone. Oh, everyone. Mate, what do you say? It's been, a truffle. it's been a tough week for myself and my extended family and, you know, Life has a way of kicking people in the nuts occasionally. <laughs> so we march on and we, we keep doing what we do. Um, belt over a round of football. I, there's probably one game that you could probably pass away as average, but the rest of them, I think, were, if not good, uh, even better than good. So. Oh, yeah. Um, and even, I, I assume you're probably putting the, um, the Sharks game as, as average, if I'm looking through the yeah. list. But, <laughs> but it, was, it was still entertaining, and, you know, if nothing else, the dogs are still alive in the last 10 minutes. So, mm-hmm. so all you really asked for, uh, I think it's been across the board. Uh, first of all, no, um, best wishes to you and Jen and, um, and the family with the, your battle ahead. Um, yeah, awful news, yeah, and, you, know, you know, you've got support around you if you need it. But, um, of course. Passing my best to her as well, but uh, hopefully she's she's got a kick out in her and um, keep soldiering on. Uh, but I think across back to what I was saying across the board, uh, I think the standard of football this year, uh, game in game out, has, has just been as good as I it has been as good as since we've done the show. As uh, good as we've realistically as close to as good as I've ever seen in my entire lifetime. To be honest, yeah. week in like game in game out, you know, most of them are only two hours apart. And, <laughs> that that one bad game of football just gets engulfed with the the other three that you watch that are fantastic. Absolutely, uh, and, and I mean, it says something like we know most, especially the Thursday night games. You see, like Thursday night, I'll watch a game, uh, and I'll be re- I just want to watch another game of footy. Like a lot of them are just yeah. that good. You just oh, fuck now. I've got to wait till tomorrow to watch another game. You know what? We've only got like a day and a half until there's another yeah, game of footy. Exactly. So <laughs> by the time people listen to this, they're probably we're probably getting ready for the preview show. To be honest. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Paul, we did say it would be up last night, but it is a day late just to, due to some uh, some personal issues there. But uh, back on track, we'll, we'll plough through the whole lot tonight, uh, try and get Barney tucked into bed at a reasonable hour, and we will come back and do our preview show tomorrow night and get that up ready to go for the weekend. Something I was thinking about, Barn, with in terms of our... This is completely random because we could have talked best off air uh, and no, we're waffling no. now. But um, in mm. terms of our... Then let us know. In terms of our punting disaster class, we might. Um, do you reckon it's worth instead of throwing it out in the preview show, maybe doing some top up stuff and and putting it out in social media? Maybe um, once the price has changed, yeah. Like once we know final the wins and that, so or just when it, when it pops up through the game, we might just jump on and leave a, a one or two minute video, one of us, and say yeah, this yeah, is where on, we're going on a Thursday night or something. Yeah, yeah. we might we might do that, it makes that way, sense. but. Um, you know, I just I had a thought just as I was looking. I mean, <laughs> talked about it off air, but here we are. So let us know what you think, peoples. Let us no, know. No, it makes think. absolute sense with ins and outs in teams, and, um, all the rest of that kind of stuff. Because that, I'm pretty sure we've all we've all had a void uh, bet a bet voided during this season. And um, when when the makeups of teams completely like when two or three deep blokes come in and change the whole lineup of the way the teams are measuring up against each other, then yeah, it's pretty hard to put you. Yeah, Money where your mouth is, as you'd like to say. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just like we'll, we'll play around with that and maybe make a bit better use of our Instagram and uh, Facebook, and uh, and even our YouTube, and put up some late mail during uh, during the weekends and uh, and tackle it that way. But anyway, uh, let's get into uh, injury news first of all. Well, the big ones all seem to come out of the game we just watched. Uh, yeah, so Torhu sounds like MCL. Uh, now, Chance was a cat. Uh, there's a Achilles, I believe, for Tavanga. This is off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chance HIA, as was um, the other guy who got a category one. I've just forgotten. Katoa. Katoa. Uh, oh mm-hmm. no, he was Melbourne. Yeah. Um, was Chance category one or two? No, he was category two, but two. he didn't pass his HIA. So yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that upgrades him to a category one. Yeah. So it was in Curtis Van Physio. He did point out that. Warriors have one of the rare occasions where they've now got two games in the next 11 days, so he will miss mm-hmm. the next two for the yep. super coaches out there and for the Warriors. It, it, 
we'll get to that later. But that Warriors game, uh, they were fantastic. But I've, I've just got a, a feeling in the well, ten minutes since the game's finished that uh, the gas pedal that that might be enough just to put a few cracks in the windshield, so to speak. They're, they're going to yeah, be tough really enough. They're going to be blown away, two. but they might they might drop a few. Be... Like maximum two weeks anyway. Yeah. Like if if they're down for two weeks, realistically, where we're what, round eight at the moment. So yeah, plenty of time coming into round ten. There's still eighteen, oh, 17 rounds to go after round ten. So they've positioned themselves fantastically coming into this, you know, into this position that they're in now. And I can't. I'll put it out there. I can't see them missing the eight at all. Yeah. And I could actually see them being closer to the top four than the bottom of the eight. But yeah. Another conversation for another time, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll save the rest of that game till we get there. Um, yeah. Not drag that out too much. Uh, Bailey Simpson did fail his HA. He'll be out next week. Liam Martin out indefinitely. Apparently, his hamstring has come up much worse than they had thought mm. it was. So we don't know when we'll see him again. And uh, and that's about it for that. We'll keep an eye on judiciary news. Look, um, don't really care when we talk about this stuff. We'll save the rest of that for later. Uh, it's th- pretty funny from Penrith. I, they really did. There was no need for Penrith to rush Liam Martin back. At no, this well, they played um, point in time either. Well, Garner was in played reserve grade. Uh, the other mm. and they had the other couple that were in the extended squad drop back to Lindsay Smith and Co. Um, what did Smith play first? They game? really could have. They, had, they, they really had could have put him in cotton wool for another two or three weeks, and they made sure he got through the season, which is a weird one from Penrith. I, they haven't shown that kind of desperation up until this week, which is yeah, pretty funny over the last couple of yeah. seasons. Yeah, and they probably um, probably cost him an origin berth, to be honest, as well. Uh, it may have cost him the majority of the season. If it sounds like that's it. That's been severely aggravated. That's probably close to 10 weeks. And mm. yeah. yeah, so we'll keep an eye on all of that. Uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on judiciary news. The two major talking points out of the week, uh, first of all, well, I guess the good news story is uh, RTS returning to the Warriors. Mm. Fantastic news. One of both our favourite players. Great to see him back in league. Uh, and a tremendous boon for a team that, as we said, may be knocking on the door of the top four. So even more exciting next year. And we know he's a sort of bloke that won't rock the boat. I assume he'll come back in and just fit in where he's, whether it's wing or centre, he'll pop in where he's, where he's wanted to play. Obviously a world-class fullback, but I imagine he'll end up in the centres. Uh yeah, it's questionable. Uh, realistically, if you look at it, um, he's probably as good as Chance at fullback. Yep. So I dare say one of those two will make way for the other and end up in the centres. Um, but they've got some pretty good centres at the moment as well. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, questionable who who they're going to push out of that lineup at the moment. I, I yeah, well, he was quite happy to play centres when Walsh was coming through. So I assume he'd just come in and plug in where he's told, but. It's hard to go wrong there. Uh, I, I think Chan's been fantastic, but anyway, we'll. He, he has been happens. fantastic. Absolutely. And and the other big one was White and De Souths. Uh The mm. Sombreros popped up again. Now one, <laughs> now one at uh, well Marubra now they've moved from Redfern. Obviously, their uh, property Sombreros growing as well, but uh, the shade big just signing, from, I assume, from Sydney all the way down. It's, <laughs> Just all across the east, yeah. Anyway, um, gets him out of Canberra, so good on him. It looked like it, it feels to me that it looked like this is what was always going to happen. Um, mm. He was just uh, was putting on a show of obliging a couple other offers, but he's um, on the way there. I assume to play in the centres, um, big in. But what's it all mean, Bar? Yeah, well, he has to play in the centres. I'd imagine there's not any chance of him taking Cody Walker's spot at five eight. No, well, I thought the suggestion may be uh, Ilias is the one that misses out, but we'll see what happens there. They've, you know, uh, I don't think Walker's a seven, and um, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> Whiten's definitely not a seven. So, no. realistically, in I think he would have to go to a wing position or a fullback position, but he's not taking Latrell's spot. So, <laughs> realistically, he only leaves one spot there, and. Looks like poor Isaiah Tass may be out of a job. Who just had a probably the best game of his career on last Friday, but uh, mm. or last Thursday. But yeah. uh, someone will pick him up. I, I'd be very interested to see now if Campbell Graham tests the open market. He's probably an eight hundred thousand dollars centre somewhere. If uh, if Whiten's getting it, so see where he's well, going. Realistically, South's best play would probably be to keep Tass and let Walker uh, let 
um, Graham. Sorry, let Graham test them on. Yeah. Because uh, like, if it's a like for like swap, you're probably better off keeping the young guy there that has the the um, the uptick in the future, and um, let Campbell Graham go out and find a spot and get paid what he's probably deserved. Mm. Play centre somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could use a, a world class defensive centre at some of the teams I follow. Anyway, uh, I think that's really all the news. Uh, usual poking and prodding from Volandis to the the union and back and all sorts of rubbish. But well, apparently, we might be starting the, the year next year in Las Vegas, and that too. Uh, apparently, to a double header in Vegas, whatever that means. Um, end of the day, I'm all for ideas and good on PV off having a crack of. If nothing else, he's um good at upsetting people. Just ask. Racing Victoria and good at keep, keeping things going. He dragged us through COVID. He dragged all sport through COVID because um, the only reason AFL came back was because of him as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the only advice I'd give him is maybe just let um, Rugby Union suffocate itself to death in a corner, which it was doing before he decided to respond to people. But anyway, that's... Give it a little bit of air time. Who am I to question Captain Pete because he's done a good job so far. And he's got, he's got as we said, he's got Rugby League at the best point it's been in as long as I can remember. Yeah, you know, I like the Las Vegas thing. I think that could be a really, um, a really big kick off to the start of the season. You get a double header over there to start the season off. But, uh, I, I, that's all about marketing and money. I would imagine. I imagine that next season means that probably we see Souths involved because they'll probably want Russell Crowe yep. pushing some barrels. And uh, I think I saw Hugh Jackman's name mentioned, so I assume that means Manly. He's yeah. a Manly fan, probably involved. Absolutely. So they'll find um, and they'll find a couple of others, whoever. Um, to well, be able South to... go, and you would imagine it'd be South and Roosters round one, and Manly, and you know, it's probably Brisbane. Probably, I'd suggest the Brisbane. Likes. Yeah, Brisbane or um, one of them. But we'll see. Maybe the maybe whoever wins the comp, maybe Penrith. But I think mm-hmm. Brisbane makes sense. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's exciting. Like, good on him. <laughs> good on him for having a crack. It's exciting. Uh, and now we've waffled for twelve and a half minutes. You may as well do some review. Anything else you want to um, touch on? No, really. All right, we kicked off uh, Anzac Round with. I just want to make a quick mention. Actually, speaking of Anzac Round, I thought most of the uh, pregame stuff was pretty well done, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, all of that. I, I will say some of the Anzac jerseys were just jerseys for the sake of jerseys. Uh, if you're going to just stick some clip art on the front of it, go and make an effort and think of a a meaningful contribution to a design rather than go and Google. Literally, two clubs googled. Um, I think. Tr- Stock photos for, Adobe for stock yeah, yeah, for troopers going. I thought the pa- like something like the para jersey or the south jersey, at least simply done, has a meaning. Um, ticks for me, yeah. But. Brisbane jersey with the poppy on each shoulder, um, even the Melbourne one with the, the whole um, you know, the, the poppies all the way down the V and back up the other side, yeah, without having to go over the top with silhouettes and all the rest of the jerseys, yeah, exactly. Anyway, 20 to 18, the bunnies. Uh, scraped home against Penrith uh, late in the game. Uh, what did the stats say? We had four tries for South, three tries for Penrith, two out of four conversions for South Sydney, two out of three Penrith, one out of one penalty attempts for Penrith, 35 out of 41 sets played 33 out of 40, six line breaks to three, 31 tackle bust to 39, 10 offloads to five. Two force dropouts to one, zero 40 20s, 313 tackles by South Sydney, 385 by Penrith. Three ruck infringements against Penrith, one inside the 10 against South Sydney. Six penalties conceded to three, eight errors to 12. Cook made 30, 41 tackles. Mitch Kenny made 49. AJ made 166 running metres, and Dylan Edwards made 196. Brighton with 148 Supercoach points, Mitchell with 102, and Alex Johnson with 90. Have at it. Yeah, it was a tough match. Both teams were good without being at their best. Uh, Penrith would be a little bit disappointed, I think. They defended well but made some uh, pretty poor errors in attack. Uh, Both teams were very good in defence, saving a few tries. They probably both saved two tries apiece and may even been a a third one in uh, that South saved, and they stopped a few opportunities. Um, both teams brought a lot of physicality for a big part of the game, and it just shows me that 
how much Penrith missed James Fisher Harris in this, in this uh, in this department because I think if he's there, there's no chance I would have tipped Souths, and there's no chance that uh, I don't think Souths would not have won this game because he would have been the guy that would have been flying in from different angles trying to make a put his stamp on the match, and he would have stopped a few blokes from running the football, uh, which is what he does. But he's been missing for the last couple of weeks, and in my opinion, it's hurt them. Um, Pretty badly, realistically. Um, it was a very enjoyable game of what game to watch. Um, there was very little between the both teams, especially with the like. You, you put the stats up against both both teams, and it shows there wasn't a lot between it. There was just a few extra errors, and maybe one or two extra individual efforts from Souths, which got them home at the back end of the game. Um, just enough to get past past Benriff. The benches from both sides were average, I thought, apart from Spencer Lenu, who's really oh. cementing himself. How much as they're, they're going to they're going to miss him next year? That he oh has... yeah, and he is that uh, like as I mentioned, Fish Harris was missing, it, but he did as much as he could to take the physical battle towards South. And I've, I've been saying it for twelve months, eighteen months. I don't know how he only gets twenty five to thirty five minutes a game. Yeah. Like if he was in my team, I'd be playing a boat for an hour every weekend because. He just goes out and he bashes people and he does everything that you want out of a physical front rower. And yeah, I, I still don't think even in this game that he's getting as enough minutes that, but he, he, um, that he deserves. The key to him and, and in what he's doing is that he, just when you think this, the game's about to burst open one way, he's the one that like puts them on his shoulders and drags them kicking and puts screaming the shot back on, into, or just runs and into breaks, the game. Breaks um, through the line. Yeah. Yeah. It, how important is to this team is going to be so obvious next year uh, when and, and great for Easts, but um, they don't beat Newcastle without him. No. And uh, they're not in this game without him. I think without him, they bust, South bust his game open earlier. He dragged him kicking and screaming. Uh, just on the bench, any other guy I want to mention uh, is Selle. I think he's been fantastic since he's come back. Uh, yeah, a bit yeah, more physical. He's given him I didn't physical... get to the South back, but yeah. Oh, no, I just <laughs> meant off. Oh, off <laughs> Jenny, because you meant, mentioned the bench. Um, yeah, yeah was... but he just gives him that bit of backup grunt and um mm, and a bit yeah, of no, absolutely. and just keeps it and, and they've missed him uh him being back's been awesome but keep going sorry yeah i thought both packs were quite were quite good with um Kenny probably had his best game in a long time i thought for Penrith. very and, physical um, defensively wasn't he was yeah and Leota was really good ball in hand um they were two of the better forwards for Penrith. clear and Luai uh, were were both very good. I'll actually give props to Lua <laughs> after what we said last week. I thought he yeah. was quite good at times with the ball in hand. He does He does this thing where he runs up, looks around, does that right foot step, and then passes to whoever's on his right, and then jogs back mm. into the line like he's just done something incredible. <laughs> he does it four or five times a game. Uh, I will say he was better than Luke Brooks this week. So, yeah. <laughs> he was. Um, quite... Uh, yeah, Cleary and Lou are both very good. Crichton and Yo would and respect by a mile. I don't know how Yo does it week in and week out. Like he is just close to the best player on the field <laughs> week in and week out. Even when he's not getting noticed, he just makes his tackles, does his hard work through the middle, and then occasionally throws a good ball to provide space for his outside men. And uh, it's just, he just does it every single week. Arrow and Murray were strong. I thought for on the south side, so would Cook and Cheekam um, were probably the best of the forwards for the south side. The Haas were decent without being overly good. Um, and uh, Alex Johnson uh, did what he does. He finishes good movements and scores tries, but Latrell was the difference. And what, what I love when, about Latrell. When he but decided he, he to get involved. In the first minute or so, he was, it was like, nah, I'm on today. Hmm. And then it was about 15 minutes later when he threw the, the offload around the back of another defender for the South team to make another 20 metres. And then when they got down into good ball, he was the guy that was getting in and drawing two and three defenders and then making sure that the ball got where it needed to go on the outside. And yeah, he was easily the difference in this game. I, um, I thought South probably should have won by more. Absolutely. Uh, that's my point. And um, because they – and it was – just on Cleary, I, I still don't think he's... I know he's carrying injury. Uh, I still was disappointed a lot of their last... Their end of tackle options, end of set options. Mm. Uh, their mm. kicking hasn't been good. And I know... And 
Yeah, his end of tackle options for the entirety of the year have been. Well, he kicked. He kicked. He kicked, like, he kicked really? like he kicked like shit against Parramatta. Um, mm-hmm. He did. I was there. He was pretty average at best against Newcastle. Uh, Absolutely. And he wasn't great here in his last tackle sets. Like I said, I know he obviously has a groin injury or whatever's going on. Uh, but he's, um, I don't know whether it's a conscious thing that he's now getting rushed because he, everyone knows Luai is not going to do a lot of their last tackle stuff or whether it's just mm. he's that, just that little bit out of form. Uh, and this isn't a knock at him as a player. Obviously, he's a, you know, the best halfback in the game, but I don't think he's been at his best kicking-wise. Uh, no, no even either. even meter kicking wise, and I think it's just become more and more obvious um, in the last in the last month. I'd say uh, that being said, I agree with you in that South busted that edge late in the game three or four times, and he he covered Semin with two brilliant cover tackles, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and then there's another one I think he chopped Lachelle in half, and uh, probably anyone else in that line just Lachelle just steamrolls, and I agree it probably could have been 30, 32, 18 this game. And I well, the that... discussion that I, I, I did have a discussion with my brother-in-law today. He's an ardent Parramatta uh, Penrith fan, mm-hmm. and he did say if Frighten doesn't move off that right edge to go and cover Taruva on the left, then South probably don't go down there that three or four times that they did in the last ten or fifteen minutes of the game, mm. which I probably do have to agree with. But it doesn't stop him going down the <laughs> down yeah, the right edge. edge. That's right. <laughs> if they put. Salmon over on the other edge, which I'm pretty sure they would have done the exact same thing. And Campbell Graham's just standing up. Campbell Graham, add Latrell, because Latrell would have folded in on that side as well, and Walker would have gone that way as well. And probably exposing Um, Luai on that side. Yeah. (laughs) But, um, yeah, I thought Souths were actually a far better time. I thought they should have won by about eight or ten points by the end of this game and they just couldn't cash in. And it was a story of the weekend, to be honest. There was a lot of teams that just could not cash in on um, field position and ball in hand and all the rest. <laughs> saw the roll of the eyes. <laughs> we'll get to that. But, um, yeah, no, the, the trail won Penrith this... Uh, the trail won South this game and Crichton was really the only reason that Penrith were in the game for big parts of it. I thought this was I thought this was just about Crichton's best game in first grade. Yeah, and that's absolutely. a big that's a big call, you know. I wanted to done, give him three points, but he, he if he's not on the field, well obviously he scored all their points, but if he's not on the mm. field that even looked like scoring, I don't think. Uh two of those tries were individ pretty much him doing it himself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, yeah. and Len you having a part in, in one of them. Um and one was lucky because I'm pretty sure he got a fingertip on that ball, but he did. Who knows? No I doubt. didn't see and, all and, the ends and, um, the While I remember it, no doubt <laughs> that um, there was a knock-on in the Warriors game either. But anyway, um, Isaiah Tass in the shadow with the shadow of White and Looming. He had his best game in first grade. He was absolutely yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. Footwork, great. strength. Uh, and as you awesome. said, if if you can, if and you're right, if Souths can keep him for half the price of Campbell Graham, maybe, maybe that's what they do. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But um, the only other one you want to mention is probably Isaiah Yeo. Yeah. I thought he was brilliant, and uh, Cook was good too. Sorry, we he's probably close to man of the match. Defensively, Cook was great, and um, mm. he, he well, he's, he he's at his best at the moment, Damien Cook. So, no surprises there. Look, I what do we take out for both teams? Penrith, uh, have got a pretty good run the next few weeks, I think. So it was a clash of the best couple of the best teams. Well, these are two teams. The Realistically, this is a top of the table clash and, and delivered. This yeah. is a this is a top four two. clash, and if you look at it, you've still got 16, 17 weeks of football to come. Like these, neither of these two teams are anywhere near what they're going to be twelve weeks down the track from now. Like they're 100%. still two of the better teams in the competition, but give it another ten or twelve weeks, they're going to be even probably twice as good as what they are right now. So. I can only imagine what kind of football we're going to see 10 to 12 weeks down the track. Uh, and and you don't know, you, haven't, you haven't mentioned, Cody Walker had another very good game. He did play yeah, well yeah. Uh, with he his did. touches. Uh, and there, I was thought... a couple of to- there was probably a couple of 10-minute periods where he sort of disappeared out of the game. Mm. But you know you get that. can happen. You know you get that with Obviously. Walker, so you, you take the best with the worst there. Uh, I agree, Latrell. Three points for me. I love, I love, I love, love, love that scrum try because the minute it broke from the scrum, <laughs> he was always exactly going to score. Going I, um, yeah. He and like he is my favourite player in the game. 
Uh, and mm-hmm. it's it's moments like that that I I just uh, I, I adored it. I love the four blokes for falling over like bowling pins uh, <laughs> when he put the two ball down. Two of them down. pushed away, and two of them just tripped over there. Yeah, own, so so uh, he gets three. Crichton two, and an unlucky two. Has to be two. And um, look, I had yeah, Yo Walker, Len Yu, and Cook all in the mix for and Tass, I suppose, for the one. So which way? You I had Yo. If you go back and look at what he did, I think he had thirty-five tackles, one miss, or something. 170 metres, and he was doing the ball playing to give Cleary the time to be able to put the, the other blokes away. Like yep. It's just what he does week in and week out, and they're the kind of guys that just get missed way too often. And, and, and we're, we've been guilty of that this year as well, so give him, all right, give him one. Uh, honorary mention for Isaiah Tass there. Uh, Absolutely. Good, good old GT can keep track of the honorary mentions these days. That's how <laughs> it is. A, it is a funny thing because, um, and I was thinking about this with the games today. There's lots of games this round where there's lots of good players. Like it's hard to. Oh, there's ten blokes you want to give points. Yeah, I, yeah, I give points to just I, about every game. To, ten blokes. Yeah, it, it's a, a tribute to everyone, I suppose. Twenty six sixteen Brisbane up in Darwin defeated the Eels. Uh, I don't want to sound as I don't know, overplay the Eels comeback, but. Uh, I thought the torrential. <laughs> I thought the torrential rain stopped Brisbane as much as anything Absolutely else. Absolutely, it did. But, and the fact that they didn't really give a fuck for the last and game also that the game. Too. Uh, <laughs> but up in the heat, what did the stats say first of all? Two, we had three tries to four. Two out of three conversions for Parramatta, and two out of four for Brisbane. Three out of three penalty attempts for Brisbane. Twenty six out of thirty eight sets for Parramatta. Played thirty two out of thirty seven for Brisbane. Two hundred and fifteen plus running meters. Three line breaks to two, 21 tackle busts to 46 by Brisbane, 13 offloads to six, two force dropouts to zero, no 40-20s, 313 tackles by Parramatta, 281 by Brisbane. One ruck infringement against Brisbane, one inside the 10 against Parramatta. Four penalties conceded to three, 12 errors to seven, sin bin for both teams, Madison made 42 tackles, Carrigan made 37 Lane with 137 running metres, and your man, Herbie, Herbie Farnworth with 225 running metres. Supercoach points, Cutherson with 86. Not sure how that happened, but yeah. Adam Reynolds with 79 and Farnworth with 70. Yeah, there's been some uh, funny Supercoach scores popping up of late, <laughs> I'll be honest. Anyway. I expected Parramatta to fight a little bit longer, to be honest. I, after about 10 to 12 minutes in this game, their forward pack was pretty much done. Apart from Madison and Sean Lane, who continued to fight for the entirety of the 80 minutes, you could take the other six, seven of them and put them in a, you know, put them in a pen somewhere and just, it's all right. Just, just be quiet, boys. You don't need to do anything tonight. It's fine because that's pretty much what they did, including RCG and Ballo, which was pretty disappointing, especially if you're a Parramatta fan. Yeah. Like those two guys have held this Parramatta. Pack up for so long, and both of them did very little in this game. Paulo was okay. RCG, what did he get bin for? Was it a hip drop? No, he got injured. Oh, I thought he got. I no, no, got Haas, Haas, oh, So just quickly, there were three hip drops in this game. Uh, yeah. His one in question was when Haas flipped over. It wasn't a hip drop. I don't think it was a hip drop. Oh, no, that's right. He got uh, where he, it's Haas, torrential yeah. rain, and Haas has flipped over him, rolled off, and then have called it a hip drop. That was uh, nowhere near a hip drop. I thought Hopgood's yeah. hip drop was unlucky, uh, similar. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, I can understand. Uh, but, yeah, textbook. Yeah, drops, yeah. Man. So, But Hopgood and, Hopgood and Haas can both... Consider themselves unlucky to be bin there. Uh, and they're both going to get a week this week, aren't they? Yeah, I think they took the early plea. So, a concern for them. But uh, I agree. RC, yeah, uh, but that being said, if RCD is missing four or six weeks, they're, they're going to struggle without him, Parramatta. Oh, they, absolutely. They have um, a real lack of four depth uh, in terms of big boys. Greg tries hard enough, but he's just that, obviously a rung below the. You know. He has a good game and then has a poor game. He's an interchange forward that's. Uh, I thought, well, just quickly, we'll run through Parra because there's not a lot to really talk about. Obviously, Sivo's at his best this year and has been. Uh, Dylan Brown was fantastic. I was about to say, I think Brown's much happier with Sean Lane back on the field. That's where I was Absolutely. about yes. to say that. And that combination <laughs> is, is probably the highlight of um, of the Parramatta team at the moment. They, they were the key. They were good here. Moses didn't do a great deal in conditions that probably should have suited. He was, he was kicking a bit better. 
towards that back but as end. As a first grade coach, wouldn't you be saying, look, Dylan Brown and Lane have a combination on the left. Matto, get out and start working with <laughs> start working with the halfback. Yeah. And cause a combination on the right, just so that no matter which way the ball goes, there's something going on. But Madison oh. just plays through the middle of the field. I don't know if he's been told to be an extra forward. Exactly. Or now, well, I'm just looking at 42 tackles. You know what it is? And and this is a reason the interchange is fucked as well, and it sort of just dawned on me, but it's a little bit obvious. BA is terrified, terrified, terrified of their middle collapsing. It's yeah. why both their Absolutely. props play such long minutes. Usually, once they start interchanging... Oh, we've both said it for, what, 12 months, 18 yeah, yeah. months? As soon as that interchange rotation comes in, their forwards just fall apart in yeah. the middle. And, yeah, so obviously he's decided Madison needs to come in off an edge and... And, do the and job just in the middle. Make 40 Imagine tackles. if you just kept Papa Lee on an edge. Well, uh, um, well, yes, but um, <laughs> and Cartwright's been okay. Uh, he's had two he's good been, games, actually. No, no, he's actually been good. But uh, th- it's to their detriment yes. that you have a ball-playing, someone who's a ball-playing edge, very dangerous edge back row, and you're turning him into a grunt. Um mm. Purely because you're scared of your middle collapsing. Uh, and I think, you know, the extension that is it as well, and I've just realised this as well, is that, um, well... And I, they sold Nia Corey and Oregon Kafusi. Kafusi and Nia Corey, who was good. Nia Corey mm-hmm. was good against tonight. So there's the other, the rest of your size gone. But you're mm-hmm. also covering for a 35-year-old hooker on one leg. Oh, mate. Um, do do you, you made six runs. Do you reckon they're, um, do you reckon they're regretting... One run for zero metres... And made six tackles and missed three or something. Like, Do you reckon they're regretting um, three year deal? Let Reed go. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but um, so you're taking then out. So between the three names you mentioned, even and Papley. So between Papley, Reed, and we knew it was going to happen. Kafusi and Neokore. You're taking was, the best part of two hundred tackles. Was Hodgson put off on the field. injury list? Because I think he only played like thirty something minutes. I don't so know. I think so. I think they said he tweaked something. Has to come in. Obviously, I. I I don't mean this in district for way because at his best he's a great player. Seems like a, a very good bloke. You know, he's more than welcome mm. to come on and be the, the next co-host of this show. But <laughs> I I would think they're probably praying for a medical retirement in the next eighteen months. Um, with all due respect to him, uh, Gutho uh, and Gutho tried very hard. Look, you know, he, we know how good he is. Always um, does. He never leaves anything out in the field. That's that all. Make- he's got his detractors, and everyone calls him the king of nothing. Fucking, you know, all the, everybody else gives him shit. But that bloke puts in as much effort as anybody on the field, Absolutely. week in and week out. He doesn't have the physical attributes to destroy people with his pace and size and just, you know, be bumping people off. And But he's always in the right position. He's always doing his job week in, week out, minute after minute. <laughs> you can't, I don't understand how that guy gets as much detrimental Tall that he doesn't deserve. Like, uh, because he wins. Because he wins. Because he's the chief winger. Of oh the yeah, he's, he's, he's the chicken wing throwing up the chicken oh, wings and chief <laughs> winger. Arms in the air. Him and Moses is like one and two, and then first tackle of the game. Oh, sir, sir, he's been doing it all day. <laughs> anyway, is that enough of para? Like, like I think well, para fans are screaming they've been robbed in this set and the, the other, but uh, they weren't robbed. They weren't robbed. Game, I can tell you. Uh, what. Like I they said, they were completely, utterly outclassed in this game. Talk about and Brisbane and oh, Brisbane sorry. shut down shop with probably twenty minutes to go. Yeah, they didn't give a shit for the last twenty <laughs> minutes minutes of this game, and it's the only reason it wasn't thirteen plus. Like uh, they were on the back foot ten minutes into this game. Like yeah. Brisbane just completely overran the middle of the field, and the only bloke that was standing up to it was RCG, and then. Obviously, the injury and you add whatever else you want to add into it. Even Paulo wasn't interested in this game. He just sort of you know, did, his, did his work for 10 or 15 minutes at a rest. Didn't really give too many shits. Um, Broncos played some pretty exciting, expensive footy, especially early in this game. They got the ball out wide. They tested Parramatta's edges. And Param, like Parramatta just wanted to try and dominate in the forwards. And... Like, after 10 or 15 minutes when you get belted in the middle of the field, don't you think that you need to start working somewhere else? Mm. But, and the only thing that 
sort of came about was Dylan Brown putting in a grubber in behind and Parramatta is so one dimensional in a lot of their football it's it just surprises me. Like to me that means that either the halfbacks or the halves in Dylan Brown and Mitchell Moses aren't thinking about what they're doing or they're just doing what they're being told to. Mm. So there's only one of two options there. And to me it looks like they're just been they're just doing what they've been told to. Apart from Dylan Brown occasionally when he goes outside the script and does, you know, a little short kick here and there and does stuff that he's not being told to do. Mitchell Moses has basically just been told to be a kick machine, from what I can see. Yeah. Just kick into the corners, just be the, the controlling half and just kick into the corners. Where he could be someone like he could be someone like uh, Jerome Hughes or Cameron Munster, who has the footwork and the, uh, the the step to be able to make the defensive line actually think about what they have to do, rather than oh he's going to get it, he's going to kick it down the other end. We just turn around and start running back to the corners because we know he's going to kick to the corners. And like that, if that change up between kicking and actually running the ball, which he hasn't done enough this year, nowhere near enough this year, they've left that Dylan Brown, which the opposition already knows Dylan Brown is the one who's going to run the ball. Yeah. So it just. It's... You're right, because I mean, maybe that's why the, the flat track bully thing becomes self fulfilling, because the shackles don't come off until they're ahead by 20 and then they go, oh, fuck, we can do what you want now. Yeah, and chip and chase. And, and then the, you see this stuff, but you don't see the it. Wingers when and. Uh, Maybe uh, you know it's a, it's, a, it's a great point. It's a great point that maybe that I think know. yeah, I absolutely think he's been overcoached as a half, and he should just decide that you know this coach probably not going to be here in two years. I'm going to be here five years down the track. I've just got me five year fucking contract. I'm just going to you know I'll play the game I want to play. But well, he could um, have gone and played under Benji Marshall. I'm sure he would have <laughs> been different there. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, as you mentioned, the pissing down rain absolutely got on into Brisbane's mindset. And I think, I'm pretty sure they just went, what's the point of playing as hard as we possibly can and then slipping and doing an ankle or a knee? And, and we'll just stand up, make our tackles, push Parramatta back down the other end of the field. And they're not going to get close to us by the end of this game. We've already done what we need to do at the start of this game. And then they, they won't beat us. Doesn't matter. And Adam Reynolds who is the king of kick him into corners and well, you know, isn't it funny? You, exactly what you just said about Moses. Reynolds is having a time of his life not being that. He was, <laughs> He's he was only doing abs- it when they need him to He do was it. brilliant yeah, in this absolutely. game. He was brilliant and he was kicking where he wanted. He was running to the line. He was Short putting blokes through holes. Using his 5'8". And that's stuff. the one thing that Parramatta don't do enough either. They don't have Dylan Brown giving Mitchell Moses options. Yeah. The right side of Parramatta's field is pretty much dead. Now, like they go right, it's Penis. They go to Penasini, and then hope something happens from there. Otherwise, it's Dylan Brown down the short side to Dylan Lane uh, to Lane, uh, Sean Lane, and then look at what happens out the outside of that. But yeah, unless Parramatta are steamrolling teams through the middle of the field, which I don't think they're going to do that to many teams this, this year. Not now. Right. And yeah. without RCG, I actually, I, I, to be perfectly brutal, uh, they won't beat anyone without RCG yeah. in the field. Simple as that. Uh, Stags was very good, uh, and I think both, well, both centers yeah. were good. You mentioned Herbert Stags uh, got to show off a lot of his footwork. Defensively, was great. He put some hits on those. Um, admittedly, as as you just said, admittedly, centers getting pop balls in nothing positions, but he monstered them when they did. Uh, both yeah. wingers yeah. were very good. I think Oates is out again, actually. Vaguely recall that happening. Uh, and um, <laughs> Jordan Ricky, another try. So he's he's good for one every week these days, uh, especially with that combination of... Uh, we're in such a great era of, um, like, watching, uh, obviously, Nakora, Jackson Ford tonight. He was he ran some brilliant mm-hmm. lines tonight. Oh, nice. yeah. um, geez, we've got some, nice, some brilliant hole runners uh, in the game at the moment. He's one of them. Uh, I think there was just confidence across the board. And as you said, they probably just shut up shot once and started pissing down and thought, well, they're not going to score 30 and uh, no a Darwin down. No point getting point. hurt. Why, why, you know, we're 20, 26 in front. We just get through our, get through what we need to do. And um, Parramatta did get the momentum at the back end of the game and it flattered them to be as close as they did at the end of this game. But 
I really thought they were bashed out of this game for the majority of it, even when it was pissing down rain and Brisbane just didn't seem to care too much. Um, Ezra Mam is really starting to come to the fore the last two weeks. His running game, his physicality for a small bloke, he's got some big shoulders and, yeah. <laughs> and a bit of speed and he doesn't mind the, mind the contact and, yeah, it's really starting to come through. Another super coach bloke that I sold a couple of weeks too early. I probably should have held him to, him to this point, but he was, I thought he was fantastic in this game. Um, there was, you know, Madison, oh, Hopgood was pretty good. He was at, well, actually, he was okay off the bench, but Madison and Lane were fantastic and close to Parramatta's best players on the field. There's probably no other forwards worth a mention. Uh, Penasini and Sivo were good. Chuck Gutho in there as well. But I thought Brown was their best player yeah. and their best back line, uh, best player in their back line. Uh, Hassan Carrigan were awesome. They just keep doing it week in and week out. They just keep busting up the middle of everybody. Pass rate two hundred and twelve meters in fifty minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah, just incredible. And Carrigan played seventy minutes, I think, and ran about the same. But just tackled his ass off. And nobody got past him. There's a couple of missed tackles, but you know he just works and works and works himself into the ground. Herbie was very good. Um, and the Broncos' halves were fantastic. Anna Reynolds, this was one of his best games in Broncos' colours. Yeah. I thought he was fantastic. It wasn't just a kicking game. He was getting involved in all the um, creative parts of the game as well. Set up a try, scored a try. Ezra Mann set up a try, scored a try. They were brilliant in the middle of the field. And I, I thought Adam Reynolds was the man of the match, to be honest. 100%, I agree. Uh, re- just... Final word on him is that he looks like he is now a player, as opposed to Mitchell Moses, who's half scared of maybe something. But he's a player who charge, knows his yeah. game he's 100%. Told, he, he knows everything about, about his game and what he does well and what he doesn't do well. Uh, and he's getting to play against behind the best forward back in the comp. Mm-hmm. With a 5'8", he now has a combination with, and with a fullback who's a freak at his and best. Tell these geeks where they he, need to be. Yeah, what he, do you want out of him? Uh, just... He knows when to slow down. He knows when to speed up. He knows when to put on a trick play. It just, it, it, I thought it was a, a Reynolds masterclass, and I agree. I thought it was absolutely it was king game into the corners, and then when they got down into field position, it was there were short balls, there was long balls, there was little grubbers, yeah. there was chips, there was yeah, it was fantastic coming out of Adam Reynolds. Um, I thought Carrigan was probably the second best player on the field. Um, his defensive work was brilliant as well as his, he was just. He was the one-two punch, and I know a lot of people, ourselves included, have been you know, given Hass the, the the accolades over the last couple of weeks, but his second punch doesn't come off Carrigan's foot. Like, Carrigan's the guy that just goes, give me the fucking ball and goes straight into the teeth of the defence, and as soon as, you know, the big guy, Paulo, RCG's running straight down the middle of the field, he's like, I'm going to build that boat. Yeah. And he's the guy that goes out of his way Put on a physical tackle, and yeah, I thought he was the second best player on the field. And then was either um, Hass Man or um, Sean Lane for the one. Thing. Uh, I had Dylan Brown for one, but the more I think about it, uh, give it, give it. I think you got to give it to Hass. Mm. I think you have to give it to Hass. Uh, beauty, you right to keep going? Need a break. Cool. We got to Saturday, the two games Saturday afternoon and evening. 33, the Sharks, 20 to the Bulldogs. What did the stats say, Bar? You had um, three tries to five, three out of three conversions for the Bulldogs, five out of five for the Sharks, one out of one penalty attempts for both sides, one out of two field goal attempts for Nico Hines, which cost me four super coach points. <laughs> 31 out of 41 sets, played 32 out of 41 sets. 309 plus running metres and 137 plus post-contact metres for the Sharks. Four line breaks to seven. Two, 20 tackle busts to 35. 13 offloads from the Bulldogs and four from the Sharks. Two force drop it. I'm pretty sure about nine of those came from Peter Pangai Jr. But two force dropouts from both teams. 0-40-20s. 334 tackles played 300. One, one ruck infringement for the dogs, zero for the sharks. One inside the ten for the dogs, zero from the sharks. Five penalties conceded to seven. Eleven errors to thirteen. Preston made thirty-eight tackles. Braley made thirty-nine. 
Braden Burns made 163 running metres and Muller Tullo made 204. Kennedy with 99 supercoach points, Waddell with 98, and Nico Hines with 97. I was going to say, it's funny, I was going to say, the Bulldogs are now feeling a lot like the Bulldogs of the last two or three years, and then I realised it's because they are the Bulldogs of the last two or They're three years. They're exactly where they, they were. <laughs> because everyone <laughs> is in hospital. Um, yeah, but they are who they are. They're, um, they are. They try, they're there. Uh, good for them. Interesting. They're missing, like, they are missing probably like, two more They're missing boxes. Josh Adekar, they're missing Keraz, and they're missing um, Kikau. Like, those yep. three players alone probably win this game against the Sharks because they were poor at times. Luke Thompson. Like, there was a good 30, there, 40 yeah. minutes where the Sharks just, like, the Sharks should have run away with this game and should have won 60 to 10, I can't, 60 okay, to yeah. 20. Yeah, we'll get so, to them. <laughs> they really, really should have put their foot down. Like, to be two tries in front after 10 minutes and then just, like, all the run of play was to the Sharks and then to just give up a try down the, the left-hand side because nobody gave a fuck and then there was a try scored down there and then it was just like back and forth, back and forth. Oh, we don't really care that much. Like, I know there's still a whole heap of game time to go, but I'm really disappointed in the Sharks. I, I would suggest um, I would suggest Fitzgibbon would be too because, yeah. and that was where I was about to say to cut you off, but I have no go. For um, it. But I reckon for the last month, the apart from the buy, they're right there, but um, <laughs> they haven't been that. You know, the old saying: premierships are won on defence, and and the best Sharks team we've seen in the last you know ten years are all defence based teams. Even last year was too, and this is um, they're leaking what twenty two points a game something like that. So, uh, And a lot of this was soft shit, soft shit as well. Uh, and probably some good cover defence saved a bit more embarrassment at times. So, and, and so, like, they scored two tries and just go, uh, suck it. Yeah. We can just put it in cru- cruise control for the next half an hour. And then they go, oh, 20 minutes after cruise control? Oh, fuck. We need to actually take control of this shit again. The same with the Roosters. They... There's a few teams in the competition at the moment that just go, oh, okay, we scored two tries. We'll just fuck around for the next 20 minutes. And Bruce's Storm, Storm as well, who have been one of the teams that don't do that kind of shit, but they're doing it this year. Sharks, Roosters. Um, you could probably even put Penrith into that mm. into that conversation at the moment. Parramatta. There's so many teams just like, oh, we scored two tries. We don't need to. We can just clock off for 20 minutes. And in the modern game, as we know, 12 points is nothing. It, it is nothing. Yes. It's it's five minutes of football <laughs> at the moment. And uh, you're right. And it's it has crept a lot into the game, actually. It makes it for exciting games for us. But uh, it'd be very interesting to see like when the screws start turning for some teams. Uh, Cowboys keep putting that team and they haven't really recovered. But anyway. Um, <laughs> they haven't really recovered. The yeah. only thing that... The only thing that, as a shark supporter, that I am actually happy about is, I think we can score more points than the majority of the competition. Yeah. Like when when we put the hammer to the, you know when you put your foot down and just put the accelerator to the floor, sharks can score more points than the majority of the competition, and that's the only reason that they got away with thirteen plus win in this. Co- in this game, well, we're in a competition where most but, points, most, a lot of not most, a lot of points come from early ball shift and um, trying to, you know, getting around an edge defender or through an edge defender. Mm. And what Sharks have is every single one of their back six has footwork. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, so, and, and, uh, and their, their back rowers too. So, pace and physicality. Like, so they look, can be. The only one that doesn't have physicality is probably uh, Katawa on the right edge. And Moylan it. But you know, old Origami shoulders put on some good hits in this game. <laughs> he was he was pretty good. Yeah, we've upgraded cardboard shoulders. Yeah, and it's a little bit tougher, but yeah. Uh, mm. uh, but like, yeah, Mulatalo will score tries and he will bomb a couple. Yep. 
and put his hand out before he puts the ball Start down. a fight. He he is a complete <laughs> fucking pelican on the field. All Everybody the hates him, oh. apart from Sharks supporters. Yeah. And so they should. Uh, so If I wasn't a Sharks supporter, I'd hate him too. I think the key is, and Nico sort of, to your point about when they need to get the shit together, it usually is on the back of Nico going, right, let's fucking get this shit going again. And uh, he did in this game. He got him back on track and showed his class again. Moylan had some good some good uh, touches, actually. Uh, you scored a try, put, uh, put a few through holes. And I thought both your, both your, back, your edge back rows are fantastic. Wilton's having quite a good season, and Nakora's having... An outstanding, like I said, as good a hole runner as we've got in a, in a comp full of great hole runners at the moment. So um, it's his footwork. Yeah. Like, if you look at him, like he's got really good speed, uh, acceleration. Probably not speed because speed needs to be over about 30, 40 meters. Yeah. But his acceleration over 10 to 20 meters is really, really good. And if you could put five or 10 kilos on him, and like to be able to bust people off and throw them around, and be physical. But his his footwork and his speed is fantastic on that right hand edge, and he just blows people away with his footwork and and his speed. Um, the sharks really, like, sharks are not a competition threat until they get some size in the middle. Mm. I said it last year. I, I said that, that that is the problem that they have coming into this year. And until they have an enforcer through the middle, um, Yuwelli is the guy. Like, he's the guy that they're going to pin their hopes on. And hopefully by the end of the season, he is that guy. But they need a physical threat through the middle of the field. That, like you saw, like, with... Um, well, particularly well, even Vanua Blake. Look at, the, yeah, the I was going to say, look at look at the Melbourne right? game. Both Vanua teams Blake did the damage in the middle, and Nat. Nelson Asal Solomona yep. through the middle of the field. They are the guys that just break open the middle and just cause chaos for the outside backs. Yep. So yeah, the Sharks are like. They just need that one physical threat through the middle of the field, and I hope it's ULA, but I don't think it's so. Yeah, 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 Finucane's not that, and yeah, Royce Hunt, you know, could be Hazleton, but... Could be. We, we um, haven't Hazleton. seen it, have we? Um, just breaking news on Nass, he's just re-signed with Melbourne to 2027, so there you go. Um, good on them. But, yeah, the, the Sharks are relying on the, the quick play of the balls through the middle with McGuinness. Um, uh, Nakora on an edge. Brayley they, jumping out. brayley has been a lot more proactive this year. Um, he's mm-hmm. been very good ducking out a dummy half uh, and running a lot more than we've seen from him in the past. And defensively, he's, been, he's had another top season. Oh, he's never been a problem defensively. Um, just want to touch on who else should quickly touch on here. Uh, oh, well, Kennedy scored a hat trick. Uh, in the space of about 10 minutes. In the first 23, yeah, 23 minutes, minutes or whatever it was. Um, yeah. yeah, good – again, talk about acceleration, pick the right holes in the right spot. Um, yeah, doing good things. Jumping over people. Uh, just quickly on uh, – or anyone else from the Sharks you want to mention? Or anything else you want to touch on with them? Uh, Nakora is the Sharks at the moment. Yeah. Like their whole – the whole – Attacking position from the Sharks is going to the right edge for Nakora to break a hole and then Ramian popping up on the left or the right shoulder and then that's what it is. But, yeah. Um, just quickly, the two I'll mention from uh, oh, a couple of things from the Dogs. Max King was outstanding again defensively, tries his ass off, and uh, our old punching bag mate, Corey Waddell, um, was great. Um, did a lot of. He was the best player in the. He's close to the best player in the field. Yeah, he had a, a outstanding game. Both sides of the ball, actually, he was he was very good. Um, the Burton to seven thing, I think, I think has legs. I think it looked all right. I think him getting the hands on the ball early, uh, he will just have to learn a bit more when to run and when not to. But I thought it worked fine from a Burton point of view. What it means for Flanagan, I don't think it necessarily changed Flanagan's game too much, but. 
Um, they may as well stick with it now. Yeah, really? I, I think they'd be better off putting the back rower in there. But I, Do you I at, at six or seven? Jake and Preston. I actually at, at half back. I'm talking about half back. Be six. Oh, no, I'm talking about half back. Burton at seven. Then no, Flanagan. I reckon you'd oh, yeah, probably yeah. be better off putting Preston in at yeah. six and fucking Flanagan off. No, I, I, I was. Yeah, I agree with you. I was, I was talking more about up people. But, yep. like, you know, offloads, play before the line. He's got good. He's got his, as good. Uh, he's got his, as good footwork and speed into the line and can play ball at the line as good as Flanagan can. And he, he defends a hundred times better than Flanagan. No, oh, I agree. I, I was talking more. You may as well stick with Burn at seven. Yeah. yeah. Put Preston at six. Yeah. yeah. Why not? We'll show you. Find yeah. another. They've got plenty of back rowers yeah. that they can yeah. throw in. I, I think it's a matter of weeks now till we see um, the young kid from, from Brisbane play. I think it's – he was named extended bench this week. I think he'll mm. be there. So I think they want to get a couple of games into Burton as a half, as a seven, and then we'll see him at six. Uh yeah, what else do we say? Uh, Sharks should have, should have won this by this game by 20, 30 points. Like, there was nothing coming out of the dogs apart from grit through the middle of the field that the Sharks didn't match, which was disappointing, to be honest. Like, the only guy that matched it up was McGuinness that decided he was going to have a crack through the middle of the field, and the rest of them just went, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. We've already won the game, so... yeah. Yeah. Well, there's not much should have been so much better. Um, Mulatalo bombed two tries, one where he put his hand over the sideline before he put the ball down, and there was one earlier where he should have, yeah, there was, all he had to do was pass the ball yeah. back inside and got tackled over the sideline. So it sucks with this point in this. I know they won 13 plus, but realistically I would have preferred them to be beaten in this game. Because it would have given them a wake up call because they were pathetic. They like the dogs at the moment are the worst football team in the competition. As a whole, yes. I'd say they probably fair call. Fair call. They, except one can't win a game and they they at least have won a game. Or, or three. <laughs> um Shall we uh should we move on? Let's uh gonna give uh Nikora three. No, Nika. Yeah, I knew you can do that. All right, Nico, Nico, <laughs> Nico, Nicora Kennedy, or you want to go somewhere else? Uh, where was I? I have to, <laughs> I have to regather myself. <laughs> mm, Jesus. Yeah, I, I get Burton two. Okay. Yeah, Nico three, Burton two, because without Burton, they wouldn't know. Have got anywhere near. Well, that that was did. more to my point that um I think it's worth sticking with him at seven. I think I think it worked. He got his hands on the ball early. Um, had some nice touches. Uh, some of his shorter kicking was a lot a lot cleaner as well. In the last ten minutes to go, when the game was on the line, he was the only bloke that put his hand up and said, "Let's you know, yeah, let's make an effort to try and get this game done." And it was Waddell or Decora for the one. So Bubba Kennedy doesn't get a point for his hat trick? Yeah, stuff. No. Nicora. No. Now give Nicora. What, what did you do in the second half? Uh, he faffed about a bit. I think he dropped a couple of balls as well. So. Yeah. Uh, just looking at Sharks next month. They've got a good month to play like shit in. Cowboys, Dolphins and Seagulls. Oh, they'll probably lose two hours. Yeah. yeah. Effort will be effort yeah. will be to the fore there. They'll lose to Manly. Probably lose to the Cowboys next week. And they'll be lucky to win the other two. Well, dolphin, dolphins is where you'll see what they can bring through the middle. Uh, the Saturday night main event was a conversion difference, 18-16. Cowboys and Knights, uh, disappointingly for me, who declared the Knights, uh, they should have won. <laughs> and me. Uh, they should have won, but what are the stats, say, Brian? Three tries apiece, three out of three conversions for the Cowboys, two out of three for Newcastle. 
zero out of one penalty attempts for the Cowboys, 31 out of 38 sets played, 26 out of 39, 224 plus running metres for the Cowboys. Six line breaks to seven, 21 tackle busts to 47 for Newcastle. Six offloads to 10, one force drop out to zero. No 40-20s. 351 tackles played, 328. One ruck infringement against Newcastle. Zero inside the 10s for both teams. Seven penalties conceded for, to three. 10 errors to 14. One sin bin for the Cowboys. Cotter made 45 tackles. Crossland made 44. Dal Holmes made 254 running metres and Gay Guy made 237. Drinkwater with 105 supercoach points. Holmes with 103 and Miller with 84. Newcastle fucked this up. Uh, yeah. Yes, they did. They should have led 12 nil after 10 minutes. Like They bombed a couple <laughs> early. Uh, and it was the execution that cost them, uh, which is the story of teams that lost this week uh, in generally. I suppose teams that lose in general, but uh, they missed a couple of clear opportunities. Poor old Lockie Miller had a horrid time all night, both uh, defensively and in attack. He dropped a couple. Still looked dangerous enough with the ball, but did some good things. Did some very good things, but he had a couple of moments. Uh, probably nearly wins in the game actually if a couple of those things go to plan. Uh, but they they dominated the first half in clearly. Um, for them to go into half time, what was it twelve six or something? Uh, yeah, twelve six uh, was um, flattering to the Cowboys, but then Cowboys came out and attacked and attacked well enough um, through the back half of that half. Uh, Drinkwater was a difference there because everything he touched Absolutely. pretty much turned to gold. A couple of try assists, his kicking, short kicking was fantastic. Picked out the right time to use his rainbow ball. Used all his standard Drinkwater tricks, but um. His execution on all of them was pretty good, and that was a difference. Uh, defensively, he did some pretty good stuff as well. Uh, I'll say that uh, after giving him a bit of a boot last week, it was Val's best game of the year. He was very, yeah. very dangerous, and that was a great battle, him and uh, Gay Guy on the edge there, because uh, mm. we know Gay Guy can miss tackles, um, and not the best defensive centre in the game, and Val's one of the best attacking centres in the game. But Gay Guy but, probably showed him up. They matched. I was gonna say they matched up well enough, but uh, it always felt there was something coming. Whether Val had the ball as well, I thought him and Drinkwater the two were probably the difference in this game. Uh, Did we had Drinkwater? That that's the issue because Miller was going left all night for some reason. Yeah, I, some reason it was. Uh, I was looking forward to Ponger and Miller combining on both sides of the field. The scene that Ponga was controlling the right, and Miller was controlling the left. Yeah, and Miller has been controlling the right for the entire season. He's been the guy that's been putting Mazu and Gay Guy away for tries week after week. And this week it was like, no, Miller, you have to go to the left. Ponga's going to control the right, yeah. and and don't get me wrong, he did a good enough job. They got close enough, but close enough wasn't good enough, was it? I feel like and, um, <laughs> there was one time if you if you go back uh, it was around the fifty around the fiftieth minute mark yeah and you saw Miller shaping around to the to the right and Miller and uh, Ponga went into the line back out of the line and then got stuck because Miller was doing his normal shape out to the right with the two boys on the right and they were doing their sweep where should have just been go to Miller. And they would have scored in the corner. It, it just would have happened. Gay guy would have either stepped inside and scored, or he would have given it to the winger and they were scored in the corner. But Ponga stopped, started, stopped, fucking, and then went back into the middle of the field and played Scott shut down. And then Miller had to come back around to the other side of the field. It just seems way too forced. Just, I don't know why they're going out of their way to force. Like, Newcastle have been good. They've been putting teams away with that sweep to the right with Miller on the right hand side. Yeah. Why force Ponger into that right hand like his best option has always been right to left. Yeah. But they seemed to go out of their way to make sure that Ponger was going to play on the right and Miller was going to play on the left, which 
didn't make any sense to me. I just, it's a bit like we were saying earlier about giving players freedom. I, uh, surely, of all people, Lockie Miller's not a bloke you'd go tell to go anywhere. You just say, mate, you see something, mm. do your best. Um, the problem has always been best to his left. Yeah, like, Pong right. has yeah, never gone sweet. to the right. Yeah. And um, they seem to cut Miller out and tell him to go to the left. Oops. Yeah. I wonder, it'll be interesting now they've had the game on about whether they pick up on that. Um, I thought Ponga was was good in his return. He was, he was good. He was good. Yeah, um, I was, I'm not going to say he was bad. No, but, but uh, you're 100% right. You're saying, saying get in the way a couple of times. Yeah, exactly. But um, he, was, he was happy to take the line on. We did quite well. His kicking wasn't bad. Um, he'll get better. He did get knocked into the head apart from a bomb. He did get. Yeah. Was waiting, was over. waiting for the HIA there. His career was done. That was done. That, that <laughs> bomb. Uh, poor bugger. I hope he does get back to his best. Uh, but ultimately, when the game had to be won, that there's just not... For whatever it is, we saw it last week with the Dragons. We saw it a bit today with the Dragons. We saw it in the Tigers game. We saw it in this game. It's in this like, game. But teams Tula get, teams get to the last... Charge should have been the end of the game. Yeah. Too long, shoulder charge in a blow that didn't even have the ball over the sideline should have been 12 versus 13 and the Knights should have scored two tries. Yeah. But why is it that it's like most teams, uh, well, half the teams are scared to attack. It's like they get there, you're behind by six or by whatever. You get down there and it's three, four hit up still and it's in push to the left. And that's all they've got. It's where... Or it's a crash play. Who like I think this game and a Dragons game last week were both crash plays when you need when you need to score. Why are you it just it, it's just bizarre. It's like surely they've someone has more tricks up their sleeve. Uh it's obviously a, a product of the world we live in where it's gotta be a completion rate and everything else, but when you've got to win games you've got to score points and there's just been so many this year where that where it's been a two or four point difference, but then the team behind never looks like scoring. It comes down to teams not giving their halves enough options. Yeah, yeah. Pushing out When your half goes into the line, even if he doesn't go into the line, you need to at least give him an option inside and outside of his Like inside shoulder, short ball, outside shoulder, short ball, or to the winger. Like there has to be two or three options when you're going into the line and trying to create points. Like, yeah, you can go a short ball to the left, short ball to the right, but you still have to have your winger on his wing and be able to throw the rainbow ball out to him to be able to score on the outside edge. Mm. And if you've got – it just needs to provide angles and options to your yeah, heart. It, it felt and like oh, – the, the, Good teams do it and the bad teams the, don't do it. Like, yeah, they, Newcastle's two ideas were, well, hopefully if it's given bus for a hole here and we score, or if we get in doubt, we might try and kick it back tonight. Oh, uh, I'll to, dummy to and young. I'll step off my left foot and yeah. hopefully I score under the post. Yeah. Mm. Um, that all being said, tough enough game. Um, what else do you take out of it? Newcastle should have won. Newcastle yeah. had a whole heap of time in possession, a whole heap of field position, and just could not create options. Ponga seemed to get in the way, especially on the right-hand side of the field, whereas Ponga's op- option is right to left, and he should have just been told to go over to the left side of the field and play, you know, just inside his centre and have options inside, outside, and do that. Miller's option has always been the sweeping play to the right. I'll hit Mazu if I need to. I'll hit gay guy short. And then, or I'll run the ball myself. And they put Ponga on the right hand side for some reason. I don't understand why they put Ponga over on the right. Yeah. Miller's always been the right hand side, left to right pass. And Ponga, you know, he, he's not the best right to left pass, but he's got the left foot step. So if the pass, you know, the dummy, and then step off your left and go back into the middle. They seem to just decide that we're going to have heaps of options on the right. Kill them at the end of the day. The, um, if they get that right, the, the other thing that I'd like to see from Newcastle is Hastings trying to run the ball because it, it, it is becoming a bit formulaic now, you know, 18 months into him being back. It just no, he doesn't... just runs across the field, passes it to someone, or yeah. he kicks it. Yeah, and he, he needs to... T- when you've got Ponga and um, Miller, it's actually him that can start barging through 
and um, perhaps taking that line on a bit better. Um, Tyson Vizel, I'll just give him a wrap because he's been great. He, he was he where we are right now with um, back row injuries. I would be making a strong case he should be in New South Wales team with uh, Martin out. Sims was there last year. He hasn't come back at all. Don't need to worry about no, him. No, he can't be. Uh, yeah, he'd be taking Sims spot. Look, I, to be honest, I, I, I imagine I end up just picking Crichton the way it's going. But um, there are a few there are a few holes in that back row. Uh, you got Murray and Yo there, obviously. But um, I'll be picking Rizal at least on the bench. He can get in and um, put on those shots, and he can. Um, and his defence has been great this year. He's been hurting blokes, uh, so I'll be pushing that barrel. On the other case, I couldn't possibly make a case for Nano to be picked in the Queensland team, but I'm sure he will. Um, there's so many blokes doing much harder work than him at the moment. Your Gilberts of the world, uh, your Fodder Wakers of the world, uh, compared to what um, what Nano's producing, uh, he has not come back anywhere near his best. Um, and maybe that's just a, a byproduct of being stuck in a small Ford pack now. Yeah, very small. There's no, like, they they don't have any go for no. Cowboys at the moment. No. no, and that's what's killing. Them. That's what they based their whole game around last year was just like punching through the middle and defending their ass. And Cotter's doing the best he can. Yeah, now he's been he was out for three four weeks and he came back and he was their best player on the field by a mile. He was yeah there apart from drink water and Cotter. They didn't have those two. They would have got beaten by forty. Yes. Yeah. So, um, end, end of the day, yeah. Anything else from this game? Probably, I think we've covered most of it. Yeah. No. Not really. Um, Do we just? Wilson's, I think we just take. Okay. Don't we just but, take this game and just put it in a bin and say it's not? It's not form when we worry about what's going to happen down the road. There's a long road to go. It's yeah. a problem. Like. The Cowboys have been so far apart from where they were last year that I don't understand. Like, how can they be that bad for the entirety of this season? Surely they've got to be better. But the, the problem I have now, and it's kind of more apparent, is is the size. Like, they're going to get bashed. The good team's going to bash. Souths will bash them out of the game. Penrith will bash them out of the game. Mm, Newcastle yeah, will all but bash them out of this game, just didn't know what to do at the mm-hmm. other end. Tigers will bash them out of the game. You know what I mean? Like you go through twelve. I've just 15, been bashing everybody out of yeah. every game. You go through fifteen Ford packs, and they're all going to be bigger and stronger mm. than this yeah, Ford no. pack. Yeah, fair um, So for Newcastle not to beat him, uh, I know they're missing a bit of cavalry, but I, I just think this is maybe this is just a, a bottom four game, and we move on. Yeah, I don't think Newcastle have enough in their halves. No, no. Um, they, they've overperformed to this point, and they try hard. They do absolutely try their ass off. Uh, I can't. Whereas they haven't been doing that last year. Um, they absolutely bust their ass. Uh, they stay in games, and they will, and they'll beat teams just through effort. Um, but beyond that, you know, it's a bottom of the table game. Uh, I'll give I'll give three points to Drinkwater, two to Val, yeah, but it I'm seems like you're going to make to a case for Cotter in that role, and yeah, uh, I had one two to Brazil. For Thank you, Val. No, I had one for Val or Gago. I thought both of them were very... Yeah, Gago was... Actually, get, give it to Gago because that was probably the highlight of the game, Val and Gago. So, um, what do we say? Drink water, Val and Gago? Drink water, Cotter. And Gago. Okay. 28-26, the Dolphins against the Titans. I wasn't... This is shit. The I still actually don't quite know how we're going to talk about it because the second half, like one I'll team. I'll tell you still... how we're going to talk about it. Jared Wallace. Jared Wallace. Anyway, oh, tell us about five some stats. tries to the Dolphins, four for the Titans. Four out of five conversions for the Dolphins, four out of four for the Titans. One out of one penalty attempts for the Titans. 32 out of 39 sets played 29 out of 35. 316 plus running metres for the Titans. Four line breaks to seven. 36 tackle bus to 42. 14 offloads to 15. Two force dropouts from the Dolphins. Zero from the Titans. 308 tackles played 332. One ruck infringement against two. 
Four penalties conceded from both teams. Seven errors conceded from both teams. Jeremy Marshall King made 39 tackles. Mo made 38. Aitken made 214 running metres. And Mo Fotoweka made 222 running metres. Jared Wallace with 107 supercoach points. Aiken with 99. And Liu <laughs> with 93. So... Yeah, the Titans came out and looked like absolute world beaters. AJ back um, looked like he hadn't missed a beat. He, he was killing it. He was brilliant uh, and a difference straight, just busting through the middle of the field. Uh, pace and footwork set him up. Could have had, um, he didn't actually score himself, did he? But he set up the first try and then um, mm. was involved in the next couple. I thought he was well, easily Titans, but by one other great 30 man. 30 minutes into this match, I was convinced it was gone. Like, over. Everyone Dolphins was. looked exhausted. Unenthused, physically incapable of matching it with the Titans. Like, and they were playing very good for the Dolphins with like errors, penalties, like just back to back bullshit, rubbish. And all they did was exab- exacerbate the issues that they had. Like, they, they, were, they were missing tackles and then they give away a penalty. They were. They couldn't slow the play ball down, so they just laid on the play the ball and just gave away rubbish after rubbish. AJ was just running them up, like just taking the piss, just run through the middle of the field, stepping off his left and right foot, making people look like idiots, passing it to somebody else for him to score a try. It, it just was so bad for the Dolphins at the start of this game. And I was like, Chair, I'm like, yeah, the Dolphins. I, I said, I told everybody, Dolphins need a rest. They're done. Mm-hmm. They, they just need a rest. They've, they've, they've been up for way too long. AJ's come back and he's just killing it. And then the Titans went, oh, yeah, we've done enough. We'll be all right. It's, we're 26 nil or whatever it is at halftime. It's like, and Dolphins are shit. We've, we've absolutely smashed them. We're just gonna have it. We'll just have a sit down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just we we'll just watch the Dolphins just come back into this game. It, it started with Jared Woods. Like he was off the field for twenty nine minutes. He got introduced into the game twenty one and twenty nine minutes into this game. 31 minutes into it, the Dolphins scored a try, <laughs> and it was off him. Like just busting holes through the middle of the field, offload back to somebody else who scored a try, and he just absolutely caved the Titans in through the middle of the field. I know you're going to say Mo was good, Tino was good. Yeah, they were good, and they did everything they could in the middle of the field, but they could not control Jared Wallace. <laughs> he is just like this guy that when when. Everything just aligns in Jared Wallace. He just destroys the middle of the field. But he could not stop him. Offloads, fucking like physically dominating people, getting over the top of him. He gave Tino a spray, I'm pretty sure, at one point. He gave Mo a spray at one point. Got up, fucking <laughs> like pushed their heads together. and went, eh, Like, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> He was enormous in it. Yeah. From what I saw, his, um, his post-match comments were pretty good too. He was quite happy with himself afterwards, but <laughs> seems a likeable bloke, actually. It's like the best game he's ever played in his entire career. It is, it is. And We've said it a lot tonight, but there was. Um, yeah, he, he did drag them back into this game. Uh, in the Well, he, he, who went with him, though? I'm just trying to think about it now. Um, Nick Cora looked good once he got into attacking position. He's had a couple of good games in a row. The go. Um, and the goat. It was him and the goat. <laughs> okay. It was him and the goat. Mark and him. Just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't give better analysis than that, Barnes, so we'll move on. Uh, you and Aitken, very good in the second half as well. Brilliant. Um, some, some, yeah. Has been for like three or four weeks. Yeah, he's found some, like, some real you know, good form. I'm not, I'm not a centre, I'm not a back rower, but I'm better than both of you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> another great, another great hole run. Actually, we've I just run over you. I'll step past you. I'm faster than you. Like, 
Yeah. Uh, mm. And um, poor old Robert Jennings did get the match winner, but <laughs> like he he physically re- he, his brain reset uh, at one point there uh, as he went into the but, fetal position. Does anybody found out what he was thinking? Like, did he think that somebody had his legs? Appar- apparently, up, he thought someone had his legs. Yeah, <laughs> he, he didn't want double movement. And then he uh, what did he do next? Uh, ran into touch, didn't he? Or put a hand in touch. No, that's Ronaldo. No, he put the ball in the corner. They could have scored two in two minutes. That all being said, Titans still should have won this mm-hmm. game. Um, with 10 to go, they were still in front and um, got the ball back after not having any ball for ages. And what's Kieran for? And he decided he's going to chip on the second tackle on his 20. <laughs> uh, a move not seen since, you know, Tim Smith in the 05 semi-final for Parramatta. Uh, but I don't know what he was thinking there. Uh, kicked it away. Dolphins march back upfield, didn't score. So AJ takes the intercept, runs 50 metres downfield. Instead of just taking a tackle, decide he's going to throw a miracle pass, intercept. They march back upfield, don't quite score. Uh, then they give away, what, a repeat set, another stupid penalty, and Dolphins score. Um, I thought it was, it, it was fucking... It, Titans played the last 10 minutes of the game like they were down by two instead of up by two. It wasn't the last 10 minutes. It was like the last 50 minutes, man. It, they it were so far in front, 30 minutes into this game, they just went, you know, we don't even have to give a fuck. The only two blokes that did actually put their balls to the wall was David Feeder and um, who's the other guy? Hang on. <laughs> I'll refer to my notes. Mo? Just, yeah, and Mo. David Feeder and Mo were the only two blokes that just went, no, fuck this. We're going to put our fucking our names up in lights and we're just going to fight and fight and fight until the end of this game. Everybody else just went, oh, fuck it. We'll just throw the ball here. We'll just throw the ball there. And nobody cares. Like, it doesn't matter. We're, that, we're so far in front, it doesn't matter. And it, it was Harms. It was Nikora and Katoa. Like, for second grade Harms that everyone, man, nobody knows fucking, you know, Katoa has been a young kid that's coming through, and um, Nikora is a Nikora. Nikora, yeah, it's been a bloke that's never Nicarina. actually stamped his name anywhere. But they were the guys that have gone. No, fuck this. We've got opportunity here. We're going to make sure that our outside backs get the ball that they need, and we're going to get them into position. and And they did it. There was no forwards from the Dolphins that were. Stamping their way through the middle of the field, apart from Wallace, who killed it, but it was the halves, and they were an absolute difference in this game. Both Nick Rambo's games since he's come in has been very good, actually. He yeah. has, he's come in and, and yeah. made a difference. Um, he's got that little bit of acceleration to be able to push outside his defender and then cause you know, opportunities on the outside. Yeah. What do you have for Titans? This was the equal record in NRL era. Comeback, 26 points, 26 nil. Um, yeah. Didn't, they didn't care. No. And it's, Nobody been, it's been the made thing. An effort apart from David Fafita, who this year has been, this year has been his strongest. Yeah. Well, he's, I think he's led the tackle count. Yeah. Most weeks as well, which we don't see. From. Making 37, 40 tackles yeah. every week to, and to, not missing them. To my point earlier, actually, it's almost a no brainer. He should be picked for Queensland before Nano. Like, no brainer. And Chuck Moe in there as well. Yeah, Moe should play off the bench. Um, and Tina. And you got three blokes that are actually pushing themselves to be something. And Foreign's in and out and gets injured here and there. And Tanner Boyd makes an effort, but what else is going on in that Titans team? Uh, and the last two weeks, Tino sat there and said as much as well. He literally said in a press conference, no one gave a shit. Oh, except for him, because he's usually crying in the press conferences. But to give up that, we've seen it before. It's um, it's pretty ordinary. It is pretty ordinary. Uh, I don't know if it's a... I assume it's a coaching thing, but I don't know. I don't know where we go some of these blokes. Um, don't quite have the answer. For the Dolphins, they'll keep doing Dolphin things. They'll stay in games. Um, they're all tough. Yeah. They're going to... Um, Jaron Marsh, King, Gilbert. 
did their job, so did Nichols. Um, Lemuele. 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 He, he was strong. Jared Wallace was amazing. Like, he was a man of the match by far. Yep. I don't understand how a front rower can be so much far and above everybody else in the game. I don't get it, but he was. All right, three to and, him. Let, yeah. Let's. Gi- I'm giving Mo two because fuck it. Um, and I just want to make a point just quickly, you super, super coaches out there. He's uh, the bloke... 222 running metres, 38 tackles. I think he got 67 points. He's owned by 560 Supercoach players in Classic. 560, not even 1% of people own him. If you want a pod, I think he's got 67 and 7 the last two weeks. Go and get him. Uh, you might have missed the price, but uh, us smart blokes have him ready. Us 560 geniuses in the world. Um, massive pod. He's going to keep producing these numbers. Uh because it's sort of effort he's putting in. He's actually getting minutes, uh, which he didn't get last year, and he's, uh, and he's rewarding the faith. Uh, he gets two. Well, uh, I gave Aiken two, and I had uh, Mo yeah, and David Feeder for the one, and David Feeder's 200K plus in Supercoach over Mo. So. Exactly. Uh, one, yeah, give Aitken one. So we'll go Wallace, Mo, and Aitken. Sunday Arvo. So, or Sunday Arvo, here we go. Uh, actually, we might take a quick break before I talk about this. Beauty, all right, back. The fucking dog just scratched at the door to come out, walked out here, literally mm. looked at me, dropped its guts, walked back to the door and scratched at the door and went back inside. Fucking festy mutt. Anyway. Uh, we'll move on. Mm. Speaking of um, festy things, 22-16, Seagulls <laughs> beat the Tigers... Sunday afternoon footy. What did the stats say, Barn? I can imagine it's all, you know, pretty uh, yeah, complimentary. So good reading. To the three out of three, tri- <laughs> three tries for both sides. Two out of three conversions for the Tigers. Three out of three for Manly. Two out of two penalty attempts for Manly. 35 out of 47 sets for the Tigers. And 27 out of 40 for Manly. 498 plus running metres for the Tigers. 102 plus post contact meters for the Tigers. Three line breaks to four. 36 out of 26 tack plus. 12 offloads to seven. Three force dropouts for the Tigers. Zero for men. Zero 40 20s. 277 tackles played 366. Four ruck infringements against Manly. Zero inside the tens. Seven penalties conceded against the Tigers, three against Manly. Twelve errors against the Tigers, 17 against Manly. Happy made 39 tackles. Croker made the 43. Bula made 177 running metres. And Tom made 157. Stafford Toa with 83 supercoach points. Ola Kawatu with 80. And DCE with 75. Manly got away to a nice lead 20 minutes into the game. Yes, they and did. Then, <laughs> and then Papa Lee and Ola Kawatu seemed to just be in a battle of who could do the most stupid things and give away penalties for the first 20 minutes of this game. Papa Lee decided that he wasn't going to play this game anymore, but Ola Kawatu continued and <laughs> decided that he was going to give away five penalties or back infringements in the first 60 minutes of the game. He did some good things. Like, he was the catalyst for the first two tries in the game, to be honest. Like, he was the guy that held the ball up and got an offload away for the first try and then ran a good line for the second try. But it was some really nice moments of football from both sides of both sides in this game. Um, but the game was won in the first 10 or 15 minutes of this game. Like, Tigers had all the ball, all the field position for 10 or 15 minutes of this game and could not crack man. That was basically what... Like if they scored one try in that first 15, 20 minutes of this game, that like Tigers would have won. But they couldn't do it. And like 
man that repelled them for 15, 20 minutes, and then they scored two tries back to back. And it was just too far gone. Uh, they, the Tigers came back and they did everything they could to uh, get into a position to get where they should and be able to get into a position to win this game. And, but they, they couldn't do it. They, it I don't understand how the Tigers can pressure defensive lines for so long and not be able to crack anyone. Like a, a short kick, a chip, a, a short pass, a, a cutout pass for someone to be able to crack over the line. They just can't do it. The Buller looked very good on the boot. Yeah, like he looks like somebody who will be a superstar three, four, five years down the line. But at the moment, he's a kid. Probably and... from Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't. <laughs> Here's the thing. He, 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 this comes down to ball possession and, and everything else. Um, everything the Tigers have, every signing they've made, everything they've done in this team is a tick. Their, their team is doing exactly what a good football team should be doing bar scoring points. Their forwards are, dom- their forwards are dominated every game bar Brisbane. Uh, on yeah, Ford absolutely. effort alone, they should, every game. On Ford effort alone, they could have won five or six games this year. Mm-hmm. Their outside backs have footwork. They have pace now. Tupo doesn't get a touch the ball this week because um we've got no halves. But it's the purely start. and simply there is no mm-hmm. playmaker in this team. Wakeham tries, but Wakeham is who he is. He's a... Reserve grade football. Bingham's had two games. Before, and has had two games. Before due respect mm-hmm. to him. The problem is, like, they've come in, they've... The problem is the halfback. Let's be honest. Any mm-hmm. other any other play... every Any other playmaker in this competition, go and pick any of them. If they're in this Tigers team on Saturday, on Sunday afternoon, they, they win. Who? Signing him? I'll think about that. <laughs> if Jake Arthur's in this team, they win. If Toby yeah, Sexton's absolutely. in this team, they win. Scott Drinkwater would have fucking put on five tries oh, in this team. Yeah. Like, they, but they, they, they have a halfback that yeah. is now so paralysed into inactivity that he does that he just doesn't know what his actual plan is for the game. So instead, what they've done is they invented this stupid fucking run around where every play Appy gets up, passes <laughs> to Clemmer, run and runs around. They do it every set now because they they don't have a halfback. I don't understand how they've moved on Hastings. They've moved on Ken Mamalo, who's a former winger of the year. They've moved on. They've dropped No Faluma. They've dropped Laurie. They've moved on um, Little. They've moved on the three other blokes who went to the Dragons and wherever else they've ended up. You know what they should do with the runaround? Just have Clamour on the back of the round. Because there's nobody else in that team that can run well, as strong and as fast straight through the line yeah. on the back of a runaround. Send that to Sheensy. Um, but the, the the thing is... Except for Sheensy. No, I said send that to Sheensy, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, there's, ne- there's no... The, you're doing everything under the sun, but moving on the problem, which is the mm. halfback. Uh, it, it's, it's fucking mind-numbing to me. Um, they had Madden there last year. He'd never got a proper crack in a proper team. Uh, and now they're fucking clutching at straws. They, it's simple. It, it's very simple. I don't know. I'll wake up tomorrow and I've re-signed for five years. But I, I don't know <laughs> what else he has to do to not be in this team. And, and I'm, I've, I know he's a lovely bloke. I've been told he's a lovely bloke. And he tries hard. But um, he's just in the wrong spot now. And, and it's to everyone else's detriment. Uh, and ultimately, look, if he catches that last pass, they, they win the game. He runs away and scores because they won't stop him. He's fast. Uh, or if Bateman gets to his grubber. But apart from that, they're now protecting with Appy playing first receiver as well. I think if you're going to do that, they need to find a, they need to find a ball-playing lock or something else, like a yo or someone to, to bring him into the game. But um, until they find a halfback, they're not going to win games. But I can't fault anyone else's effort. And, and the, 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 the annoying thing is, all the best players on the field are in the Tigers' colours. Uh, and But as we said in the preview show, the difference is Manly have DC and Tommy. DC had his worst game in about three years and still was the difference in this game because they had a halfback. If he's on the other team, they win by fucking 40. Um, there's no one really from Manly, I want, apart from doing dumb shit. The only bloke I want to rap, uh, Tommy did great on one leg, but he's busted. Um, Jason Saab was the most dangerous bloke in Manly colours. I think he's... Nah, the first 15, 20 minutes, when 
Tigers were on Manly's line and just pressing and pressing and pressing was Jake. Yeah, fair enough. It was enough. Jake just picking off. He knew where the ball was going. He was the guy that just shut it down. Yeah, like, that's fair. He knew exactly where the ball was going, and he was the one that was making the one-on-one tackles, bringing the blokes to the ground, and just going, okay, what do you got now? And he was already, he was the one that was pressuring the halves. He was the one that was going from, from marker to pressure the halves and then going, okay, you need to make the right decision now. Yep, and what they fair. did, they it's made the wrong decision. <laughs> Even if they did make the right decision, Jake came into that position and stopped them from being able to create problems on the outside edges because he filled in that position that should have been filled in by somebody else. Yeah. Now that's Jake fair, is a fair commentary. Absolute monument to the game. Like he is just brilliant. Like I know everyone goes, oh, he's the nicest bloke in the game. But no, he's it's not that. He is the guy that just works his absolute backside off time in, time in again, and he knows where the ball's going. He knows how the football's being played. And he knows where he needs to be. And he's the guy that gets into that position to stop shit happening on the outside. And that's what he did. Because I mean, the Tigers have realistically have only got one pass in. Yeah. And comes off happy. And unless, you know, you get like the the Harry Grant pass to Munster who scores underneath the post tonight, which we'll get to shortly. Who else does it? Who's the bloke that's pushing up on the inside like Munster on no, the right. angle yeah. off Appy to score? Should be Luke Brooks. Yes. Well, exactly. Instead, he gets the ball two passes off the ruck and runs in the line. And, gets and then floats and across the field yeah. and then hopes that he's got a kick out to come on the inside. Or Exactly. Which they don't have. Um, yeah. It, it's... It, it, it's just, as as you know, just so frustrating. Even when they hit the front, you, uh, you knew they were going to fuck it up at some point, and they did without fail. Uh, and the other thing is, like, they've conceded. They've done so much possession all year, and they concede long-range points every game on the back of a mountain of possession. It's it's just frustrating. Uh, just touch on a couple of blokes. Oh, well, you, know, you know, it's at the point now, speaking of last thing on, on the halfback, is what I would do now is, if they can't do anything else, Play Appy at seven and just start Simpkins. And just, Appy should be playing at seven. Just play him at seven and put Simpkins on the field because Simpkins has got some ability uh, and has been good so far and just, just do it that way and move on. Because you can play Bateman at six as well. You can play, absolutely play Bateman like, at six. He'd have enough creativity. He's, you yeah, know, absolutely. He, he plays he, angles. He likes to drop people under the inside. And if you gave him a license to put a grubber in, I'm pretty sure it would be just as good as what fucking Brooks does to grubber to the ground. Hundred percent. That that's pretty much the option they're at at the moment. And it's short ball to Papa Lee on the left edge. That'd be okay. Yep. Um, Clemmy, Clemmer and Appy through the middle of the field. Good. Same with Twal. Tuck them in there. Stafford was really good on the right side. Like he was busting tackles, pushing people off, scoring tries. He was really good on the right hand. He was the Tigers' best player by a mile. They get uh, um, they get Naden back next week too, so that that's promising. But no, uh, and, and, and Joffa was good. Joffa Joffa was very good. Joffa was good. Return. Yeah. You know, talk about Manly. Manly's back four was poor. Um, everyone, including Schuster, who was the worst of the lot. <laughs> but Jake Chaboyevich and Bullmore were really good in the middle of the field, and they held that like they pitched that middle of the field up. You chuck Sipley in there, who was really good off the bench, and I don't expect him to come off the bench for too much longer. I think he will be a starting front rower for him. Um, Moly gives away a lot of penalties, does a lot of stupid shit, but when it's clutch time, he scores try. Off the back of DCE's kicks or short balls, and they were the they were Manly's two best. Tigers should have won this game. They get. <laughs> I know Manly were better through the middle of the field, but Tigers really should have cashed in on their opportunities on the outside edges, and they didn't do it. Well, the problem is, they they didn't, the, the thing is, like you said, that 
they didn't give them any ball. Toa did what he did off his own bat. Like, they've mm-hmm. got to spread the ball early. Tupo touched the ball about, what, five times. Like, mm-hmm. you saw he did the week before to Parramatta. Get him in the game. Like, spread the ball. You've got nothing to lose from getting the ball out there. Try and isolate him one-on-one. It just... For all this talk about ball in motion, this and that, they don't do anything. Even any just it. run angles and then drop him on the inside. Yeah. They, they, tell me the fullback's going to stop him. Tommy ain't going to stop fucking Hamoli no. coming back on, uh, you know? Like fucking same with um, uh, and, uh, who's the Tigers? Back, uh, Papa Lee. Pup, yeah, we know what he Tommy's not going to stop Papa Lee coming back on the inside no. straight one on one. That's like, right. Papa Lee is just going to run straight over the top of him and just put the ball down. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, I don't understand how Twal hasn't scored a try yet. He's a massive motherfucker. Just give him a good inside ball on a one on one on the fullback. Yeah. They ain't going to stop him. Like, how is that Blake not ever scored a try ever in his entire NRL career? Appy's trying his best, actually. Isolate him one on one and drop him back on the inside against the fullback. Yeah. Yeah, good luck. You're not going to stop him. <laughs> The Tigers, the Tigers just seem so fixated on what we can't do. Yeah. That, that just what like, I, I don't understand. Like, who gives a fuck? Just throw it around and do what you can do and just you will score points. Yeah. And you know what happen? when It'll be like Canterbury. If you, when the bow breaks and it finally happens, I'll put 50 on someone. Mm. It just it'll be a random game. They'll just come out and put fifty on someone. Every go, oh fuck, really? Oh. oh fuck! Inside balls, outside balls, yeah. fucking dummies, inside outsides, and a short ball on the back. Of them. Yeah, I agree with what you said earlier about uh, Jareem the Dream. I think he was outstanding. Um, made a couple in the wet conditions, made a a couple of errors, but he was fast enough to cover him as well. Like he would drop a ball, have time to swear at himself, turn around and make the cover tackle as well. <laughs> I, That's I, exactly what he did. Yeah, I, th- <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I thought he was outstanding. Like, finally, there's a bit of excitement. Himself, turn around and stop the try. Yeah, I thought he was. Um, Are you fucking idiot? Turn around and stop yeah, the try. I thought that was brilliant. Um, he's got, and he's got. He's still got a little bit of growing. He's fast, uh, and once you get some confidence, um, I've seen some of his highlights from New South Wales Cup. He's got ten or fifteen kilos in. Him. Like, yeah, seriously, like they can put ten or fifteen kilos of muscle on him and play first grade. Yeah, and. He's probably not going to lose any pace either. That's like, right. Yeah, he just needs it in the in the top end, like around the shoulders, and uh, it, <laughs> there's no creative opportunities out of Tigers. That's the problem. Yes, that's right. Like, where's like, Harry? Where's the wizard? Well, but like I said, that that's need? where I would um just play two dummy halves. Do it. Like get Simpkins on the field and just go roll through the middle and try and get inside outside and. Do it that way, because nothing else is working. Anyway, we've talked enough about them. I'm sick of talking about them. <laughs> uh, give Josh Schuster a rap. No, he was terrible. <laughs> he was fucking horrible in this game. He was one of the worst players on the field, Josh Schuster. It was comedy capers. Jesus. I enjoyed it. Like the, <laughs> seriously, he he needs to go back in the back row, and everyone needs to move on with their life. Uh, He's definitely not for the record, five, he, he had five missed tackles, four errors, and a ruck infringement. So that was his, uh, and a hilarious attempt at a kick, which he missed by about three foot. So um, good on him. Uh, Manly won this game on the left hand edge, and it came through Hamali and Sipley. I know Sipley's a middle forward, but he played to the left edge, and they tore up the <laughs> the Tigers' right hand edge. And then DC got on the back of that and then spread it to the other side of the field when everybody went over there to cover the right-hand edge defence, which was old man who got injured and disappeared after 35 minutes. And then you can throw Harper in there and Schuster in there. And, yeah, and then they went back to the other side of the field and they scored a lot of their points. But... Stafford Tower was the best of the Tigers by a mile. Yep, I agree. What um how are we splitting these up some points wise and sounds like you're Molly with three, simply with two. And then I had DC or 
No, TC oh, was, was awful. He was awful. He had he had some he had three try contributions, but his kicking was terrible for a block part. Um, <laughs> give it to I actually thought Appy deserved a point, but give it to Tower. Why not? No, I'll give it that. Uh, I'll we, tell her. we get to okay. Give it to Appy then. Uh, yeah, there's the usual good signs, but I'll be tortured for the rest of the year. Twenty set we Anzac Day. We get to today, uh, and Barney's been quite <laughs> merry today, as you can tell, mm. if you've made this far in. Uh, 27-26, an absolute cracker in front of 40,000 people. Both games today had tremendous atmosphere, and it came through the TV. Uh, and crowds were good all weekend, as they've been all year, so that's all positive signs. Uh, we got a cracker. Uh, went down to the last six minutes, and, um, you know, you argue the made Dragons probably should have won, but uh, what did the stats say, Barney? You're there. Four tries to the Roosters, five for the Dragons. Four out of four conversions for the Roosters, three out of five for St. George. One penalty attempt, one out of one penalty attempt, and one out of one field goal attempt for the Roosters. 24 out of 35 sets, by 29 out of 38. Five line breaks apiece. Bit of conjecture here, because we'll need to look at that later, but it was 48 tackle bust, 43 which came down to 48 missed tackles to 51. So there was eight tackle busts that didn't exist before the eight missed tackles. But right. eight offloads to 11, one forced dropout for the Roosters, 0-40-20s, 305 tackles, played 298 for the Dragons. Two ruck infringements from both sides, one inside the 10 to 0, eight penalties conceded by the Roosters, by the Dragons. 12 errors to 11. One sin bin for the Roosters. Egan Butcher made 36 tackles. Jack DeBellin made 43. Teddy made 234 running metres. And Tata Moga made 158 super gauge points. Moga made 112 super gauge points. Suwali made 94. And Kiri made 88. Roosters started very quickly. Um, some lovely service out of cheese to Radley and a short board to Egan led to a, tread, a Teddy try straight up through the middle. Uh, Hunt had a bit of um, beautiful footwork, actually. Like, you don't uh, give Hunt his footwork that he does, but what he did in this movement step inside, outside, and then push again to the outside and uh, get Suwali on an edge outside of his man, score a try outside there. That was um, really, really good. Um, cheese with some lovely service and the short ball from Egan led to a 30 try. Um, You've read that one already, Mark. The best, the best movement of the game was, I thought, was from Letters. Jared Warrior Hargraves with the short ball to Radley straight through the middle of the ruck to score underneath the post. That was a beautiful, um, beautiful little pass there. And I thought the Dragons were about to get a flogging after that. Mm. Well, the difference was uh, for, for the first 50 minutes, they played direct. They, there was much more, it looked much more clarity from the, the Roosters because um, they had the one controlling half. Manu did what Manu does and just ran straight and hard for a lot of it. But he tag team with Teddy and Radley and Cheese, which is what we've been waiting for, we're going all the way back to our pre-season preview. Uh, mm-hmm. And they just looked yeah, a much absolutely. more direct team. And, um, yeah, heaps better for it. But then, look, Dragons tried really hard here uh, and got back into this game basically by testing the edges. Uh, I thought Suli... They probably should have won it. They, they should have won it. Suli was sensational. Every time he touched a mm-hmm. ball, he was causing trouble on an edge. Um, which obviously benefited Moga out there, but he um, <laughs> he was he was awesome today, uh, mm-hmm. really good. And and then got punished for the last ten minutes with a broken arm. That yeah, he Is that had what it was? to go and try to keep playing. Yeah, oh yeah, they wouldn't take him off the field. Like yeah, that was bizarre. He said, "Go on, my arms fucked." Yeah, yeah he's right. like he was like flopping his arm yeah. around. It's like, Get me off the field. Just, nah, keep going. You'll just, be right. just walk it off. It'd be right. <laughs> Shake it off. Um, <laughs> I thought it was uh, the, the two leading lights, apart from Sawley for the Dragons, were the, the two youngsters, Amone and Sloan. They had some great confidence mm. here. Oh. 
um, running the ball, taking the line on the slow. Did you say a moment? Yeah. He's right. He had the kick across where Sloan should have scored. He had some nice, some nice touches, um, but Sloan was um, Sloan was great. You could see Sloan's confidence grow throughout the game. Uh, he was quick to take the line on, and his defensive decisions got better throughout the game as well. He shut down a couple of um, potential try scoring uh, kicks late in the game um, and cleaned him up. Uh, I thought he was very good, Sloan. Here, yeah, I can't agree with you, mate. Okay, fair enough. I'll give you Suwali. Sloan. Suli. Oh, Suli. Sorry, this. sorry. Yeah, I um, can't <laughs> give you a moment. Okay. I'll give you Suli. Uh, Jack Bird was good, does some dumb shit <laughs> as usual, but he was good. Uh, and look, I actually think if Ben Hunt was at his best, they win this game. Yeah, if he easily, was at his best, I, they I actually, do win this game. I don't, yeah, absolutely. I don't think he's been with us for a couple of weeks. His it's, passing game's been horrendous for us. Well, like they probably should have won. They should have beaten the was it the Titans? They lost by two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he made some weird decisions in the back end of that. Uh, and in this game, and there's another game they probably should have. He's won. been choosing to kick rather than pass. Yeah, which and is, he just he's his passing like, and, game's always been his strength. I know there's been a lot of shit. Off don't get me wrong, he's got a good kicking game, mm. but, but it just feels like he he doesn't have the clarity. Puts people away with his passing. He, he just it doesn't seem like he's playing with any clarity at the moment. I think he's a bit mm. between. With every going, probably a lot going on off the field as well. But um, yeah, he's been. A bit, I, don't, I don't know if it's disappointing, but he just hasn't quite been with us. Um, what do you think of the Roosters halves? I thought much better. I just uh, oh, there's a there's a whole lot more clarity about what they were doing. Like it was Kiri's Kiri's option was to kick and to spread the ball, and Manu's option was to run through the middle of the field. Yeah. And like that hasn't been there with um, Walker because Walker's a head case. Like he just whatever he decides when he gets a meter away from the defensive line is whatever he decides. Well, it's usually Whereas a short Manu's, kick, or it's a, like or it's a rain or eight times out of ten it's a rain. He does no, he does not have an option in his head until someone's about to tackle. Him. Yeah, and then he and makes usually, that option oh. up. And it throws it yeah. 20 yeah, metres to the wing. I'll chip it, I'll yeah. kick it long, I'll, it's, I'll just do whatever. Whereas Manu is just like, I've got the ball, I'm running. I'm going to step past you and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And Kiri is, I'm going to kick long or I'm going to, you know. They, yeah, I think they're a much better attacking potency having Manu as a running half and Kiri as an organising half. Yes. Because... Manu just knows he has to run. Like, and Walker doesn't want to run unless he's got some, you know, and is unless he's got an option in front of him where he can run, he's not going to run every time. Mm. It'll be- Whereas Manu will run every time because he doesn't care who's in front of him because he backs himself to just push him off and run past him. It'd be very interesting. Doesn't matter, like, if you got the best, like, he'll run at Jack, doesn't care. Yeah. You got the best defender in front of me, I don't care. I reckon I'll beat him. If I don't beat him with footwork, I'll push him off. And you know, if I get tackled, I'll get up and play the ball. Yeah. Whereas Walker's not going to do that. He'll try to chip for his outside man, or he'll try to put a grab room for himself, and then put his arms up and go, "Oh, it should have been a penalty, sir." And, and what takes that his, the, the Walker t- takes the sob sob. Like, if we're going to get down to brass tacks, Walker takes the sob. Soft option every time. Yeah, fair enough. Manu does. What Manu then does by being direct is it brings Teddy in. Because Teddy, the best of Teddy, the classic Teddy play is straight through the middle, busting that, being big enough to bust that, you know, half a gap into a full gap. And we saw it in the first, well, not so much in the first try, but it was the, the just classic play it was him running on with support there. But um, Manu being there brings Teddy back into the game. And Teddy just hasn't been in the game with Walker Running around like headless chook, as you've said. So, I, I think they stay. I think I think well, obviously they won. I think they stick with this for a, a while. It'd be very interesting in the next month what comes out with Walker. Whether he's happy to cop it until Kiri, until Kiri moves on, or whether he, um, I'm sure the Tigers would take him, uh, or whether they <laughs> try and go to market and get out of it. And um, you know, because the Roosters we know are quite clean to to move teams on. So, um. 
there's a spot at Canberra too at the moment as well. So we'll see what happens with uh, with him. Uh, Tupanua and Crichton got through their work okay. There was sort of softly, softly, nothing, um, you know, just I think they were all just happy to get through it in one piece. The Radley, the Radley head clash. What do you make of that? I was a clash. There's no way that bloke should have been sent off to it. No. Sim- no. Simple as that. Not much else to add no, there. Like, yeah, it's three and three and everyone's going, oh, he's been sent off three weeks in a row for a fucking shoulder to the head. There was no shoulder to the head. Like, yep. Unless you can show me another fucking a video angle that I didn't see, I didn't see any shoulder getting close from Radley to hit no. anybody in the head. No, exactly. And be sent off for 10 minutes. Um, Did you see one? No, I didn't. I saw the same as you, David. It was a head clash. Um, you know, who, if, you, if you're if you not that keen on some of the Dragons plays, who were the best for them? I checked the Bellum was close. Like, he made 40-odd tackles. And I don't think he missed one. But... Um, there wasn't much else really. Uh, Bird was very good again. Like Bird's been close to their best player week in and week out. Um, he <laughs> he just does his work. He doesn't shirk any responsibilities. Just gets in there, does what he needs to be done. What needs to be done. Um, it wasn't. Hunt was okay. Sloan Sloan actually created a hell of a lot of opportunities. So did Saul. Yep. Those two guys on that right hand edge were the two guys that created pretty much every point that the Dragons were able to supply. Um, if it wasn't Sully giving the ball to Sloan, uh, wasn't Sloan giving the ball to Sully? Was Sully breaking tackles and then giving the ball back to Sloan? Like they were the two guys that were. Great points for the Dragons. There wasn't much else in it. And then they just throw a rainbow ball out to Moga, who was ever scoring in the corner. Like, yeah. It was Sloan and Sully that were creating all the opportunities on the inside of Moga, who cashed in and got a hat trick. Uh, I thought Radley was good, apart from getting a phantom, a phantom fucking, like, he cops, he deserves to get sent to the Simbin a whole heaps of times, but he didn't deserve to get sent to the Simbin in this game. Um, Teddy was good. Um, so was Butcher and Kiri. They were very strong. Um, Smith in the centres. I Smith. think he's played about six games in his entire career. Um, what's the... What's the center's name? He played for the Roosters. Uh, Alan White. Hang on, who we got here? No, Smith. Centers. We got uh, Suwali, Momorowski, Hutchinson. Did he come off the bench. Yeah, Hutchinson came off the bench, didn't he? When um, no, the other, there was a Smith. Tupac got injured. Oh, White. Sorry, White. Nafahu White. I don't know what you're talking about, Bar. <laughs> Tedesco, Tupo, Suwali, Momorowski, Paulo, Manu, Kiri. And the bench is Hutchinson, Tupanua, Lodge, Allen, and White. Yeah, I don't know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know either. Obviously. Brandon Smith played hooker. He was all right. He was fine. <laughs> he was good. He was brilliant. Where would you get 120 metres? That's probably what I'm talking about. Brandon Smith and Manu were the were the big reason for the Roosters getting home. Like, if Manu wasn't on the field and Brandon Smith wasn't on the field, St. George probably win by 10. Yep, I agree with that. Um, I think we've covered off most here. Um, so in terms of the Roosters, as we've said, you'd, you'd stick with what they've produced today, keep that spine, get them a few games under their belt, straighten them up. Uh, Rui Hargraves, so we've wrapped him enough. You mentioned he had the nice try assist, but geez, he's, every run of his runs counts. Um, yeah. Anything else? Cool. Um, how are we going to split these points up? I'm going to say three points to Suli because I can. Uh, two to Cheese. Suli? Yeah. Wow. Two to Cheese, one to either Manu Sloan.
or Jared? What are you thinking? I had three for my name, two for Bird, and then I had Cheese or Salali oh, yeah, for the one. Um, give it to and uh, give it to all right. Three to Manu, two to Suli, and one to Cheese. You're right. You're off. And we wrap up a big Anzac weekend with that uh, was the final score here, thirty twenty two or something. Uh, Melbourne, correct. Melbourne beating a plucky Warriors. <laughs> uh, yeah. What did the stats say? Five tries to four, five out of five conversions for the Storm, three out of six for the Warriors. 33 out of 39 sets played, 35 out of 39. 332 plus running metres and 95 plus post contact metres for the Storm. Nine line breaks to four, 35 tackle bust to 33, six offloads to four, one force dropout from both teams, one forty twenty. So the Storm. 348 tackles played 363, three ruck infringements from both teams, one inside the 10 against the Warriors, five penalties conceded to seven, nine errors to four, one sin bin for the Warriors. Nick Meany with 113 supercoach points, Tanua Blake with 100, and Harry Grant with 96. I don't often... Um, we, we, we've made a point over the years of of not getting into ref bagging, but honestly, when we do, for some reason, Grant Atkins is involved. I thought through the back end of the first half, some of those those penalties were fucking appalling to get Melbourne back into this game. Um, when was the last time we had two face rub penalties in a space of five minutes? Uh, and it, it just kept going from there. There was times when Melbourne were offside off the scrum. You could see it, and there was no, nothing done, but then they penalised Warriors for a dropout. Uh, in fairness, he was nearly at the 10 metre line when he kicked it. But, um, <laughs> and in the second half, their own discipline was the worst enemy of the Warriors. But, uh, Warriors came out firing here. They were fantastic for the oh, first they were half up hour. In the base um, the their forwards were, were brilliant. Uh, Fanua Blake, Ford, uh, another fantastic hole hitter, laid the platform. Tor, who looked great for that first 20. Um, and they were able to put, uh, which some other teams didn't this Dylan weekend. Walker up into the line. Like, yes. You don't see many 5'8s take the ball that far into the line and give a short ball to, you know, Jackson Ford for the first try of the game. Like, that was brilliant. Yep. And then, um, you know, the one-on-one, you know, he was one-on-one with Jerome Hughes and he just barged past him. First 10 minutes, Warriors were on top and, like, absolutely killing the middle of the field. Sean Johnson, Walker, Tavanga, Fanua Blake. You'd extend that 10 minutes out to probably 25, maybe 30 minutes of this game, and they were absolutely killing the storm through the middle of the field, and they probably should have been 20 points up after that first half an hour. But they just couldn't find a way to, you know, score those points. But they were causing all sorts of havoc, especially Tavanga and Fanua Blake through the middle of the field. It was probably a shame to see Tavanga being taken from the field and not come back. Yeah, well, apparently it's Achilles because... too, which if that's the case, that's his year. Uh, and that's a shame because he's, he's been outstanding this year. He really has. And he was causing all sorts of problems. And then Fenua Blake was getting on the back of that. And uh, Sean Johnson, it's just like, he just, I don't know what's happened with Sean Johnson, but in the last 12 months, he's just decided I'm going to sit back I'm going to take my time. I'm going to pick my passes. I'm going to pick my kicks. And Charms has been an absolute you know, uh, contributor to that because he's just been giving him good ball to be able to set up his outside backs and then been scoring tries. Like Charms has been holding the ball up or just taking it into the line and giving it to somebody else who scores on the outside of him where half the time Charms probably could have stepped off his right foot and scored himself. But – like, Sean Johnson has been close to the best form he's ever been in his entire career over the last, what, two, three, four, five years? Oh, since, since he's Whatever. been at the Sharks, yeah. Yeah, since he was at the Warriors before yeah. that, yeah. Um, the game changed, and simply, uh, Fanul Blake went off, and about a minute later, Nelson went on. 
And Nelson, <laughs> speaking about Ford's just shouldering a team, he picked them up uh, and just said, I'll drag you fuckers with me and we're going to march upfield. Uh, bent the line every time. Usually Bennett fell over and offloaded as the big body came crashing to earth, threw his arm out and offloaded to someone in support um, and completely changed the, the whole game. Uh, and on the back of that, Nick Meany uh, was absolutely brilliant through I'm the middle, um, chasing, first of all, chasing Nelson and keeping them going, but then drew the back end, being in the right spot, being in the right support play, finishing. Um, he's just just uh, had a very, very good year, Nanny, but this was a very, very good game. Um, I think they were Melbourne's two best. Munster had his moment, the usual Munster moments where he's just... He was to... doing the work that um, Jerome Hughes should have been doing. Yes, yeah, Drew Hughes was not with us at all in this game. No, he wasn't. Like he, he occasionally pop a ball here and there, but it was Meany that was the guy that was like, "Oh, well, you're not doing the job, so I'll just grab the ball and pass it inside or outside to somebody else." Like, I don't know why Drew, like, Jerome Hughes was trying. He was trying trying his ass off, but he just didn't. He could not provide what he normally does. Um, he had a couple of nice right foot steps and created havoc through the middle of the field, but it was Meany that was picking him up off the back of that. And um, it was, it, it came down to Munster. Munster was the man that was causing havoc through the middle of the field, stepping off both feet, both feet giving balls inside, outside to people that would, would score tries. But communication between... Uh, Harry Grant and his arms was not there tonight. No, but no it wasn't there it was. last week either. No, I don't know what it was. He was calling, I, I don't know screaming what he... at people to be in positions that he wanted them to be in, and they weren't there. And I don't because in in, early, in that first half he ended up. I think he had to. There was two or three sets in a row he had to kick for. He kicked, and they weren't very good kicks. But he was left on the fifth just with no there other. There was option, nobody there to, with him. But to, um, one was self inflicted because he sort of ran, but. Um, he had to kick because there was no options with him, uh, and it's been that has been the theme the last couple of weeks for whatever reason because you think it should be one of the most spe- settled spines in the comp. Uh, you look at every time he looked for an option, the only person that was there was um, King. Yeah, he was the only bloke that was there to give him an option to get out of where he was. Yeah, he looked left, right, looked left again, and then went back to his right, and it was King that was there. There was nobody else apart from Nelson, who was the guy that was just charging through the, the middle of this pack. And Fanua Blake was doing the same thing for the Warriors. And it was a brilliant matchup between those those two forwards were the two blokes that laid the platform for both of their sides. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Charns was very good till he got injured. Uh, and ultimately, look, Apart from a cut, some twenty minutes of questionable officiating, including a, a clear knock on, I don't know how that winger try was not given a knock on. The first touch was clearly a knock on against Melbourne for that um, for the me the second meanie try. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, that all aside, um, the injuries cruel them because uh, they lost Torhu. They, they had nothing, no one on the bench. Tavanga, Torhu, uh, Chans and whoever it was, the last bloke, plus the binning to Walker. Um, it was a mighty, uh, yeah, a, a mighty, yeah, it was, a mighty effort to even stay in this game after that because um, that you take them out any team, uh, you're going to struggle. So, and all three of them had great games to that point. Uh, I think this game, I th- and for 65% of this game, Warriors were clearly the better team, and to your point earlier, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know how they miss the eight, and if they get, they do have to weather this storm for a month now because there's a few blokes, no pun intended, that we need to get back on the field. <laughs> um, but once they get them back towards the back end, you get um, Tamari Martin back. Uh, hopefully, Tor who's back in a, a month or so, if it is an MCL again, uh, and you know potentially Metcalf in the wings, potentially um, a couple of others. They set up nicely for a, a run at the finals, and and the sort of team you studied the buys earlier um, that can pick up those Origin games. Actually, now I think of this, pick up those yeah, games through Origin and set themselves the up. The Storm to didn't have a chance in this game until months to forty twenty. Yeah, it changed so, absolutely. I think they had like two sets in the entire first half inside the Warriors. Like they did not have a 
they had two sets inside the Warriors' 40 in the first half of this game. And then Munster went down and kicked 40-20, and they scored off the back of them. And then they came out straight after halftime and scored again. And that was with that was uh, 13 against 12. Yeah. And then the Warriors went and so the Warriors scored first straight out of halftime, and then Storm scored again. And it just came down to a, a, a game of attrition. And the Warriors were missing four blocks. They didn't have a bench for 15 20 minutes, minutes or so yeah. at the back end of the game. And there's no way you can win a game of football with 20, like with no bench rotation for the last 20 minutes of the game. And the Warriors were the better team for 40 to 50 minutes of this game and probably should have won this game. And you know, it's absolute kudos to them and Andrew Webster because. A year ago, they would have lost this game, but Melbourne would have put 30 on in the last yeah, 20 minutes. They would have lost by 30. Yeah. Absolutely. And we've seen them beat the Sharks out of nowhere, uh, put in an effort like this to spot all but winning. Uh, Every game. Every game this year, they've put in this kind of yeah. effort. And they've won most of them. Yeah. And they probably deserved to win this game, and they didn't. He's someone, definitely someone to keep in mind for Coach of the Year is Andrew Webster. I don't know who, no, absolutely. who will get. He actually, he's probably favourite for it. Unless Dolphins finish top top four, then everyone will <laughs> and blow smoke up Bennett's yeah, ass again. True. But and and rightfully so. Uh, Even if they finished eighth and the Dolphins finish fourth, I'd still put Webster above. Agree, agree, because um, because they don't deserve to. You know, like realistically, the way he has um, got them up and about and got them to fight for every minute of every game. I know, like, the Dolphins, but he came with a blank slate and had and put together a team that's going to fight for 80 minutes. This guy came in, the team that was lucky to fight for 50 minutes of every single game has got him into a position where they fight for every minute of every game and they think they are the better team yeah. for the majority of every game that they play. And they probably will be. Like, I'll be surprised if they finish lower than six, to be honest. Yeah. This Warriors team that is running around at the moment is, like, superior to a whole heap of other teams. They've got some injury worries now, and, yeah, they might drop a couple of games over the next three or four weeks, but they have been fantastic since the start of this year. To the point where it now, and, and we've talked a lot about execution. Night. The key is that they execute when they do, it and when they uh, seven out of ten times they execute well and score points. And it comes back to Sean Johnson. Yeah, and if you can put Tamari Martin along the side of him, who's been brilliant when he was playing, and is now out for a couple of weeks, but you put him back into this side, they probably win this game. Um, what else do we take from it? But, um, it's the same. It's the same thing that we've said from the start of the year. Melbourne's forward pack is not as good as it needs to be, yep. and they're going to struggle against really strong forward packs. And Warriors are one of those strong forward packs that will test you for sixty to eighty minutes of most games. And they got away with this with a bit of you know, razzle-dazzle out of Munster, Ollum, breaking tackles and, you know, running, what, what did you do? Run 50 metres off a, off a, off a kick, kick restart yeah. and brushed off four or five players and then got on the back of a couple of dummy half runs. And, and Munster then made a 40-metre and, break. And, yeah. and then they scored a try. Yeah. Like, that was the difference in this game. It was like... Olam being able to brush a few people away and then a couple of dummy half runs and a penalty, and then the halves got on the back of that and they scored points, where they probably should have lost this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, outstanding game. We, you know, ca- capped off a great weekend. Let's give... Well, who are you going to give the three two ones to, Barn? I had a Noah Blake for three. Yep. Nelson. I thought he was fantastic. Scored a try through the middle of the field when nothing was happening. 
he absolutely dominated the game for the first 25 minutes until they decided to get Nelson involved. And then Nelson was my two. Yep. I probably sh- could have been three, you know, toss it up, do what you want. But uh, Fenua Blake was strong for 60 minutes in this game and Nelson was strong for about 45, 50 minutes of this game. And then... Uh, I had um, either – if Charles didn't go off for a HIA, he probably would have got two points. But I'm still going to put him up for one point or on. Meany? Yeah. I'll give Meany one. Give Meany one. Uh, only Charles unlucky, but Gross. give Meany one. Yeah, three to AFB, two to NAS, and uh, one to NM. Uh, yeah, what a great <laughs> – what a – Great round. I'm just actually just having had a quick look at the ladder. I actually don't think this ladder is too far off the mark what we're going to end up with right. already. So top top eight at the moment: Brisbane, Manly, Penrith, South Sharks, Storm, Warriors, Dolphins, Roosters at nine, Parra at twelve. Uh, we're pretty close to the mark there. Mm-hmm. I have concerns for Parra now. They're going to miss RCG for six weeks. I can mm-hmm. see him dropping three or four games in that time. Uh, you know, of, of everyone in that top eight, we'll see where the Dolphins' run ends, but I think Storm are maybe the other ones you'd, you'd be nervous about. And Manly. Manly could go on a, you know, things could go wrong for Manly quickly as well. They probably should have lost in the weekend. Yeah, I think Manly probably gets down close to the eight. No, if Manly, if, put this way, if Manly had have lost on Sunday there, they're down in 10th, so. Where are the Roosters? They're ninth on 10 points. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I'll probably say Roosters take Manly spot. Yeah. And then toss up with Parramatta. Who's in seventh? Dolphins? Warriors seven and Dolphins eight. So, Dolphins and, and, Dolphins and Manly are the two that I would expect to drop out of the eight, and and maybe man. Well, the thing is, now we, we've got we, we've got better clarity. We can pen um, look, obviously pen the Tigers. Dogs might finish below the Tigers if Tigers work out how to score points. Canberra, <laughs> Cowboys, Knights, Titans. You just you don't need to worry about them. I'd suggest St George interesting because they have overperformed, but I'm still I'm still not going to pen the Cowboys. I still think the Cowboys finish higher than the Dragons. I don't think they make the eight, though. You're holding out. You've been holding out hope for too long here, Pine. Time to accept. No, no, no. I still think they finish higher than Dragons, and I think they'll be pushing the bottom of the eight. Okay, fair enough. Um, let's wrap up then. Have you got a pop plan of the week? Yeah, my pop plan of the week is um, Momorowski from the roost. Okay. Two errors, 10 tackles, five misses, six runs for 45 metres in 80 minutes of football. Josh Schuster gets mine. My Labrador could do that. He could do that. With his hands tied behind his back. <laughs> Schuster, what did I say? Four, five missed tackles, four errors, and a ruck infringement. Uh, yeah. Was and didn't cover himself in glory, and uh, yeah, dropped. No, he was very disappointed. Dropped two balls that led to points, I believe, actually, as well. A one, yeah, at least one. One did, and then he had the kick that sent. Anyway, you got a salute. Mm-hmm. I got a salute. Worries, like <laughs> for them to be so far behind all game, end up without any substitutions on the bench, and get as close as they did to to Melbourne. It was fucking brilliant. Like, Charles, Devonga, Tohu. Like, Charles, Devonga, and Tohu. You know, like, you take your one, your 12, and uh, your 13 out of your team, any team, and still not get beaten by more than 10. No. Yep, absolutely. And that, that happened at half time. Like, they lost all of those. Well, I think Charles went about. 10 minutes after half time, but Tavanga and Tohu were gone by half time. Yeah. And they were two of their best players. And then you take Chance out of there and then 
you know, it was Jackson Ford that went as well. Like, well, Bailey Sirianson, they have taken another, you know, bit part back row out of your team and have no reserves for the last 20 minutes of the game and only get beaten by eight. Brilliant. They... Yeah, uh, yeah. Change their whole disposition yeah, of what their team's about. Absolutely. Uh, I am going to salute a couple of front rowers, first of all, uh, keeping the theme going from last week, actually. Uh, Nelson s- dragging back Melbourne from... If he doesn't mm. come on the field, then then they do win, or he's do probably they lose both. The, exactly. Nelson uh, and Jared Wallace, again, taking on a, a, a Ford pack that's been hot and, uh, and dragging... The Dolphins kicking the screaming back into that game. A bonus, a bonus salute just quickly to Angus Crichton. Great to see him back on the field. Just got through the, got through had any issues. Uh, yeah, long time favourite of ours, and just to see him back and doing well. Hopefully everything's good with him. Have you got? A I'm going to salute Adrian for putting up with my garbage and my bullshit that I have put up tonight. That's well done, Andy. fair enough. Uh, I'm also going to salute um, myself for uh, tipping Damien Cook first try score at 50s. I got on Betfair, <laughs> and <laughs> I even tipped the minute it would happen. How much you have on it? Enough. And um, <laughs> and uh, Jackson Ford, I did have him at 50s today as well. So hey, oh, good doubles. weekend. No, nice. uh, you got to slap someone barn to finish up. I'm gonna... Ronaldo Mulatalo. Ah, took the words out of my mouth. It's fucking, mate, stop talking shit and putting fucking, you know, rubbishing your opposition winger and just worry about putting the fucking ball down before you put your hand out <laughs> and not scoring tries that you should be scoring. He's got money on you to be the top try fucking scorer of the season. Yeah. It's, ah, oh, at 12s. Oh, uh, and he bombed a try before that as well. He did. It was like 30 minutes before and he just like was running with the ball and just threw it over the sideline. Uh, no. Yeah, he was mine too. So just because we haven't either done anything about him tonight, uh, the Titans can have a slap for giving up a tw- the 26-0 lead at oh halftime. Oh, my God. Uh, they need many we slaps. We both backed the Titans, didn't we? Yes, yeah, so... Um, for the record, the two that cost me the perfect mm. round were the two I declared as specials. Uh, Times and the Knights. Yeah. So, <laughs> apart from that, did all right. So, anyway, it is the, well, part of the great game, isn't it? Having a wager on some of these. Uh, anyway, we've got through it, Barn. You better go get some sleepy buys, my boy. All right, good. <laughs> good stuff. I'm sorry for being useless. Oh, maybe. get out of it. All right, we will be back. Guess what? You've got to do it all again tomorrow night because we've got a preview. Oh, uh, good. We've got a preview this week coming. It'll be good tomorrow. You'll be so. right. Nice, a nice good night's sleep. Yeah. It's been a big Anzac day for our Barney boy. Uh, all right, thanks, everyone. Check out rugbyleaguemerch.com. Tune back in tomorrow to, for us to preview another. It's already some, some rippers lined up. We've got footy in two days' time, which is lovely. One day by the time you're listening to this, take care, guys. Stay safe and talk soon. Bye-bye.